the shadow of the Golden Dome. It is senior day in South Bend. Every group leaves a legacy for the class of 2019. Their fuel was the disappointment and grounding of a four win 2016. A program reset the following season brought Notre Dame back to big moments on the big stage. A 10 win season and a return to New Year's Day victories. It all set up last year's captivating undefeated regular season and a place in the college football playoff. And while the dream of a title run ended against the eventual national champion Clemson, that foundation of resilience has been on display within this season. And today, a group that has helped return the Irish to a regular spot among college football's top teams entered Notre Dame Stadium for the final time, where they have won 17 straight, hoping to finish back-to-back -back perfect home seasons. Standing in their way, one of college football's top rushers in A.J. Dillon and a Boston College team in need of a signature win. For the 25th time, it is Notre Dame and Boston College. And Senior Day festivities, all 30 Notre Dame players were on schedule to graduate this spring, making their way out to their parents at midfield as we welcome you to the final Notre Dame Saturday of 2019. So if the Irish win this one and then beat Stanford the Saturday after Thanksgiving out in Palo Alto, they'll be 10 and 2 with losses at Michigan and at Georgia. And when you look back at the forecast, that's where most people thought this season would be for the Irish. One thing they've done since the loss at Michigan, they're playing their most complete football, winning three in a row. For the second straight week, it's a top five rushing attack, but different from Navy. It's the power of BC, a BC team that once was number one, or beat number one Notre Dame in here, and 35 years ago today had their greatest sports moment. It was authored by our partner, Doug Flutie. Doug and Catherine Tapper will join us right before kickoff. You're watching Notre Dame Football, presented by Bright House Financial. Final seniors being introduced to the crowd here in South Bend. Mike Collins on the PA. Taking the field one more time from Dayton, Ohio, a grad student pursuing a master's in finance. Joining his parents, Suzanne and Jim. Please welcome, he made it all the way up to the top. Wide receiver number 10, Captain Chris Fink. Let's have a big round of applause. From walk on to captain, now the rest of the team join them for the final time in South Bend this season. Here come the Irish. Frank Kelly was born 10 miles from PC campus in Everett, Mass. 5 0 all time against the Eagles and the Ian Book who was just introduced a short time ago plays close to his Northern California home next week at Stanford. He has been red hot the last nine quarters. 1993 was the year they knocked off number one Notre Dame here. They haven't been back since 2011. Here come the five and five Boston College Eagles. Steve Adazio told his team we're going to have a warrior mentality in that tunnel when we take the field. He used to be an assistant here a couple of decades ago, trying to get a win to get back to a bowl in these last two games. 34 snow showers in the area. Here's Catherine on the cold field with Brian Kelly. All right, Coach, senior day is always very special. How has the leadership of this senior group helped you guys string together three straight wins? Consistency, you know, that every day you have to have a consistency in your approach, and they've been able to lead in the locker room, um, on the field, in the practice uh, environment, and, and that's what it takes to be a consistent winner. You've mentioned that this Boston College team resembles a lot of what you saw last week against Navy, so how do you plan on defending the running attack? You've got to be disciplined first and foremost, and assignment correct. They're, they're big, they're physical, they're well coached, and then we've got to find ways offensively to put some points on the board because they will do that. They're one of the top offenses in the country. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, Kath. Mike? All right, Tap, thank you. Happy anniversary. Doug Flutie 35 years ago today the great Hail Mary pass at Miami what's it been like as everyone's been mentioning to you all day it's been a fun week it yeah. really has and just the fact that 35 years later it's still remembered uh, we really appreciate it and brings a smile to our faces glad we could bring BC here for the anniversary too yeah, I, I worked that out <laughs> we're gonna have a feature on the uh, Hail Mary pass coming up at halftime let's talk about the passes Ian Book has thrown and the runs he's made the quarterback was hearing the noise after the Michigan game he's been making the noise since then you know we've seen it in him over the last year and a half and in the last two weeks he's played 
elite football with confidence, throwing the ball down the field, good decision making. It all stems from the last drive of the Virginia Tech game, going the length of the field and running in for the winning touchdown. It just built his confidence back up where it needed to be, and he has turned it loose. Well, Catherine just asked Brian Kelly about Boston College, fifth in the country and running the ball. When you see A.J. Dillon and the Eagles, you know it's going to be a long afternoon. It's a physical afternoon. A.J. Dillon is a horse. I mean, 75 carries over 400 yards in the last two games combined. It's amazing. He's a downhill physical runner, but he's very patient. He's got exceptional feet. He's quick with his feet, and he does have explosiveness to take off. So he does have a lot of runs over 20 yards. He's a physical pounding runner. The one thing Boston College struggles mightily with his defense they give up a lot of points so Notre Dame won the toss they're going to take the ball first and try to put BC behind in this game Irish a three touchdown favorite in this one they have continued to have success here at home as Notre Dame today goes for a 17th straight home victory and back to back undefeated home seasons and Steve Adazio has told his team coming off of five week they need to bring that power and some of the rest that they built up in that off week because their physicality will be the way they can beat the Irish here on Senior Day in South Bend. the kicker he's kicked eight out of bounds this year well keeping the field of play is one of the keys for <laughs> BC Lawrence Keyes back deep to receive and off we go here from South Bend it's towards the sideline but Keyes has it from the three as the seniors throw their marshmallows a senior day tradition BC with a physical hit they will force the Irish to start at their own 20. Of course, it is senior day, so Chase Claypool, who is red hot, one of the players will feature for the Irish here, along with Tony Jones and Chris Fink, who are seniors as well. Trevor Rulin's an interesting story. He has battled multiple injuries. At one point this year, thought he might not be able to play football because of the injuries. Other injuries have meant Rulin has stepped in here the last few games, and the graduate student is a starting right guard for his final game in South Bend. Bit of a delay because the play clock is not resetting. It has, and we're ready for Ian Book to get this thing going. This drive for the Irish will start from the 21, and Book looking to keep the hot hand with the passing game. On senior day, Chris Fink came to 22 out of bounds, right around the 43 yard line. Jermaine Muse the cover. Watch Chris Fink, patience on this route. He's going to take it to the inside, make a hard move towards the post, and boom, foot in the ground, break to the corner, easy throw and catch. To the corner, this easy. secondary for Boston College struggles, to say it at the least, 125th in the nation pass defense. They give up a lot of points, 32 a game as well, officially a gain of 21. Tony Jones Jr. out of the backfield. Down to the 48, gain of a half dozen on first down as Ian Book looks to add 10 total touchdowns the last nine quarters. He told us yesterday, Doug, this has been an awesome year, even though there was a lot of outside noise, so much so he had to get off of social media the last month. He's gone through a lot of the downs, now he's enjoying the ups of this three game run. Speaking of run, he's going to keep it, keep the throw alive to Claypool. No lineman down the field, so it's a first down, no flag, and a gain of a half dozen. The seniors touch it here on the senior day. Doug mentioned the BC defense that struggles mightily. Bottom five in yards allowed. Richard Gear going to Clemson transfer is finishing his career as an Eagle. Max Richardson's the linebacker will call the most, leads the ACC in tackles. Secondary to be tested. We've already seen that, and they will be tested often this afternoon, one would think. Tony Jones of the carry. For three yards, Isaiah McDuffie with that tackle. So Mike Palmer is usually the starting free safety. He is out. So Nolan Bergerson is going to join Jermaine Muse at the safety positions that try to hang on here for dear life. Irish on the move, second and eight. Pressure picked up for the moment. Book escapes as the first down and more. Ian Book shy of the 30, gain of about a dozen and a first down. Well, Tony Jones, number six in the backfield here in pass protection, misses his block, pressure on Ian. 
Ian Book steps up nice and calmly, though. There's no panic in his movements. His eyes stay up the field, sees an opportunity to tuck it and run. His feet have gotten him out of so much trouble this year. He's much more athletic than a lot of people realize. Little flinch by the left tackle. Yep. The Irish have been pretty clean on those false start penalties the last couple of games. Not here. Stuart Mullins is our referee. Start, North 74 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And it's Liam Eikenberg who had five during the year that became a problem but Eikenberg's played better football in this three game stretch that has coincided with the winning streak. The defensive coordinator for Boston College Bill Sheridan said we have to contain Ian Book keep him in the pocket he makes so many big plays when he moves. So it's first and 15 and Jones will run to the right and BC takes advantage of the penalty and keeps the Irish in long yards to gain Marcus Valdez sophomore from Perth Amboy New Jersey on the stop. A little penetration by Boston College up the field into the backfield beats the puller and making the play on the throw. Boston College has to find ways to get off the field whether it's one big play penalties might help them. But if if Notre Dame is efficient on offense they should be walking the ball up and down the field. Play seven of the drive book almost threw an interception. Great chance to catch it for Brandon Sebastian the left corner. But he couldn't hang on a real third and long. Take a look out to the right what Ian Book sees is tight end going to the flat and it's a trap corner. He lets the outside receiver go instead of jamming hard and eyes Ian Book breaks on the throw underneath. Sebastian with a great opportunity for Boston. They can't let those kind of opportunities get by. Sebastian played a lot as a freshman most snaps of any of the returning DBs on this Eagles team. It has lost five players to the NFL draft the last couple of years. Third and 15. Book has time. He will step up. A long way to go. And he's going to get to the 29, which should put the Irish in field goal position. It'll be a 46 yarder from here. We'll see what they do. Elijah Jones made the tackle. And here comes the field goal unit. Well, forcing field goal attempts from what we saw on film coming into this game is a win for the Boston mm -hmm. College defense. Uh, Jonathan Dore, who's taken over as the full time kicker this year, has had a good season. You see the numbers there. Three of four on kicks over 40 yards. It's going to be 47 with a uh, little bit of wind that is blowing, helping him. John Shannon, a senior, snapped it. The punter, Jay Bramlett, held it, and Dore comfortably knocks it through from 47. First drive, first points, Notre Dame. Good job by the Eagles, though, to keep them to three. And they'll get the ball when we come back. Free with your NBCSN subscription. All the details waiting for you at NBCSports.com slash live. Word of Life mural, Hesburgh Library, just right to our left, outside the north end zone, as the Notre Dame defense goes over its good start, holding BC to three and out. Giving the Irish offense good field position at the 49. Book first look has been taken away a couple of times. He scrambles and will get four yards to the 45 yard line. John Lamont with the tackle pushed him out of bounds at least. Actually Lamont did a heck of a job of, of just mirroring Book and keeping him contained to a short run. It's been bizarre in the last three games Ian Book has been the leading rusher. Their name's spreading it out in terms of the running backs but. They haven't been able to get going either. This one for Tommy Tremble a bit behind and incomplete and was read by Elijah Jones. Second time we've called the redshirt freshman from Harlem. Little outbreak and he eyes it and breaks on the ball. I'll tell you Elijah Jones had a shot there because the ball's a little behind the receiver. If Tommy Tremble doesn't get a hand on that it might be picked. PC showing some pressure up front here on third and six. They bring five. They mixed it up though, and Book gets rid of it to Fink. Is it a catch? They say yes at the 38 yard line for a first down. Now Marcus Valdez, I mentioned they mixed it up. He's the lineman who dropped in coverage. He's saying no. The officials say first down. Ram had Ian Book all tied up. This is a heck of a conversion. Great throw and catch. Falling to the ground on both ends. Book throwing and Fink catching. 
A nice job by Book as he was getting hit, and the replay will stop the game to look at it. We have Terry McCauley, three time Super Bowl referee, up here in the booth with us, our rules analyst. Terry, that looked all good. Mike, he controls it, pins it against his body. Ball never moves after it hits the ground. After he hits the ground, that's a catch. It's actually McDuffie with the with the pressure. Great job by Book just getting it close and Fink going down low, getting the arms under it. Just coming through. He's just back off of injury. Uh, McDuffie making a play. The boss has got a little pressure on Book so far, making a move off his spot. But he, Ian Book just stood in there, That's took the hit. Review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. That is a heck of a conversion. Both ways. Chris Sims down watching field level. Hey, they're doing some things coverage wise, but the big thing to me is they are scared to death of Chase Claypool. And, you know, three step drop game, quick passing game. Watch out for Chase Claypool. Just get him the ball in his hands, make these guys tackle. They haven't faced, other than Clemson, receiver like him with the ball in his hands all year. Four touchdowns last week. That's moving on Josh Lug, the right tackle, who's in the lineup with the injury to Robert Hainsey. Offense, five yard penalty. First down. Luck making his third start, so the Irish with two procedure penalties in these first two drives. Not the well oiled machine we've seen mm -hmm. the last few weeks out of Notre Dame offensively. So first and 15 for the second straight drive. It's a designed run this time for Book. He's only going to gain two. Flag comes down after the hard hit from Isaiah McDuffie. We mentioned McDuffie earlier. First game back was last week against Florida State. 69. Offense. 10 yard penalty. First down. It's Aaron Banks and three of the five offensive linemen have penalties for the Irish. In the game's first 11 plays. 69 here, Banks. There's a little grip. Now, once you start to lose the guy, you got to pull your hands off. That's he still got him inside, but but once the defender tries to pull away, got to release. So penalty will back up the Irish here to their 47 yard line. First and 25. Again, the pressure, the screen was taken away. Book out of the pocket, buying some time as he's going to take off and try to get something out of it. And two yards, and thus far, if there's a headline from the first half of this first quarter, it's BC's defense is doing a lot to make easy access difficult. Gets a little pressure from inside here, and they're trying to set up the screen, and Book sees it, but it's not there. Can't make the throw and has to move off his spot again. So it's been pressure by the BC defense. Wise to the screen on first and long and on second long for the pocket again. Book had to pull it down and he's brought down. Tanner Carafa comes up with his first sack of the season. Graduate student who's played most of his career gets on the board. Carafa right in here is going to twist and get penetration. So Boston College up front. Finding a way to, to get pressure on Ian Book, get him uncomfortable, can't make the rhythm throws yet, and getting out of down and distance too with penalties. Yeah, and they are doing exactly what I mentioned. Steve Adazio said he wanted his team to come out of the tunnel with a warrior mentality. They are not being stopped up front. The rush three here on third and 31. Fink will get as much of it as he can. Got a block downfield, but he'll only get back to where this drive started. At the 48 of BC, so a terrific job by a much maligned Eagle defense. And they'll force the Irish to punt it away. Combination of penalties getting Notre Dame out of down and distance, and then a little twist game, little scheming up front, but also in coverage, rolling the corners and breaking on the short throws and creating a little indecision, I think, in Ian Book's mind right now. You saw the junior Travis Lee who awaits the Jay Bramlett punt. Bramlett will try to pin the Eagles inside their 20. He'll do just that as they'll start back at the 9. 15 of Bramlett's 50 punts have put the opponents inside the 20. It's 30%. That's pretty good.
One of the top rushers in the country on your right, A.J. Dillon. One of the top receivers in Notre Dame history on your left, Tom Gatewood. Why do we show them together? Tom Gatewood is the grandfather to A.J. Dillon. So he's wearing Notre Dame underneath, but he's got a B.C. hat on. He's sitting with the B.C. fans, including A.J.'s mom. A.J.'s mom, Jessica. Jessica was on the plane, said she had to go pick up some applesauce for A.J. at Grandpa's house. We'll tell that story a bit later on. Here is Dillon on the edge. He's got a first down and more. And you see, he is tough to bring down. And then six foot, 250 pounds. Although he gilled in the tackle, but a gain of 14. Well, we think of A.J. Dillon as a downhill physical runner, but he's got quick feet. He gets a little bounce. I mean, that's Sean Crawford, an athlete. Defensive back, he did a little shifty move, gets to the outside and turns the corner. The first down in space from the 23 yard line and Dylan will get two this time we saw Gatewood in the stands there you know, Gatewood of course an all American wide receiver at Notre Dame Joe Theismann was his quarterback back in the late back in the late 60s early 70s so he came on AJ's recruiting visit here at Notre Dame but AJ wanted to be at BC once he went through the process there Adi Ogundiji comes around and gets Zay Flowers as they try to use their receivers on those end arounds often. The Irish defense, they lost two of their three defensive ends up front, but Khalid Kareem has been the best D lineman for the Irish this year on this senior day. Linebacking core question, Osmar Bilal has provided some of the answers. He closes out his home career. So too to Jalen Elliott, Troy Pride, Dante Vaughn in that as well. Half a dozen seniors, their final game on this Notre Dame D. The pass, a third down is complete. Hunter Long. It was a very good pass catching tight end needed to get to the 33. He is five yards short. Freshman Kyle Hamilton the tackle and BC will kick it away again. Well, BC is not going to make a lot of conversions if they get in long yardage situations. Notre Dame knows that drops back soft zone. Kyle Hamilton comes up with the hit keeps everything in front. The key for Boston College offensively is staying down in distance. If if Notre Dame can just penetrate the line of scrimmage cause a few negative runs will put BC up against it. Grant Carlson again to kick. Not his best. The bounce is friendly. There's a flag down as well. Or is that a marshmallow? That a marshmallow, was a marshmallow out of the corner of my eye. Yeah. <laughs> 44 yards. It goes to the 28 yard line. Oh, you wacky seniors are going to catch me here today. Saturday Night Live this evening, Will Ferrell is the host. King Princess, the musical guest. With some costumes, some fun, some laughs. Saturday Night Live, of course, that is live across the country. 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 on the West Coast here tonight on NBC. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Chris Sims, Catherine Tappan, our rules analyst Terry McCauley, Liam McHugh, all with you for the finale at home for the Irish. Trying to win a fourth straight game. This is their third drive. They'll try to run it this time. Sebo Flemister and he stopped for a loss of a yard to so this PC defense gives up almost 500 yards a game has done a good job the first two drives. Flemister the sophomore from Williamson Georgia. Nobody's really taken ownership of the running back job for the Irish this year. It certainly has been by committee and Flemister's improved in this pass pro. That's why he's getting more of a shot. Did a good job there to keep this play alive. But buying time sideline it is caught terrific scramble and grab at the 47 a gain of 26. Wow what a throw on the move. Ian Book they drop in zone coverage so he has nothing early just moves out to his right and throwing this on the run in a tight window drops it in right on the sideline. It doesn't get any better. Catch 34 commit and these Irish receivers know Book keeps plays alive so they come with him to make the play there. Flemister to the right. Could not be wrapped up by Max Richardson. And will bounce forward and gain two or three yards. Let's go back to that last play. And uh, Ian Book took a shot as he's working that right arm a little he bit. He is working a little bit. He took a pretty good shot. So it's the falling to the ground that he lands straight onto his shoulder, grabbing it right away. Bryce Morasis uh, hit him illegally, as you said. Second and seven. Book pressure. The crosser is Comet, the tight end. Chopped down, but after a first down, as he gets to the 36 yard line, and Book continues to 
Work that arm around, that right arm, Chris. Hey, guys, the one thing we're seeing, Boston College is really playing deep in the secondary. They're willing to give up some of those short passes there. I think that's what Notre Dame's pass game's going to have to adjust to. They're trying to take some deep shots here early. I think they're better off that way. Flemister out. Tony Jones Jr. is the running back, and Jones takes advantage of that opening inside. He'll get to the 28 yard line Max Richardson the tackle it's the top tackler on Bill Sheridan's defense Bill Sheridan first year as defensive coordinator here is second year on the BC staff but he's been a defensive coordinator a bunch of places including in the National Football League his time at Michigan as well and as you saw was on Bob Davies Notre Dame staff very respected coaches uh, working with uh, a lack of personnel right now as Jones carries a yard shy of the first down Doug BC has seen five players drafted into the NFL over the last two years off this defense and it's a little bit tougher at a BC to replenish the way other schools find it a lot easier to do no doubt about it it's a little bit thin right now with all the there were seven NFL guys, or guys that went into NFL camps last year off this defense so Richardson 14 is the most dynamic of the linebackers today three straight runs for Jones wrapped up there trying to keep it alive we will see the mark. It's very close to the 26. I wonder if his forward progress will get him the first down. It will by that mark. And along the lines of what Chris was saying about coverage being soft on first down, as we get a look at the replay on the short yardage run. And they're going to measure, by the way. As they bring the chain gang out. And the Terry McCall, yeah, let me ask this for a fan at home. Okay, so maybe he got to the 26 on forward progress, but then his feet stayed alive and he tried to keep running. What do you do as an official in terms of spotting that ball? Well, Mike, he really never regained his footing. He never reestablished himself as a runner, so he's going to get that initial forward progress until he does get his feet back, which I, which they gave him on this one. It was really a good spot. So that's a good spot. Okay, I believe so. Yeah. Yes, I, I know fans ask that all the time. You say, wait a minute, he's trying to run. He's going back. Why are you giving him the ball up there? And there is the reason. Final hundred seconds of this opening quarter. And Book pressured. Flushed. On the move. Taking off. Ian Book puts that shoulder down to get the first down at the 13-yard line. Elijah Jones the tackle. The secondary is actually holding up for Boston College and forcing Ian Book to hang on the ball. And as you said, his escape is getting out on the corner, banged up his shoulder just a couple plays ago, willing to take another hit and take the first down. And Chris said he keeps seeing Notre Dame receivers covered, but they're deep downfield. First and ten. Jones through traffic squirts through. Gains about five. Be right around the eight-yard line. Well, the first first downs is an opportunity to throw your individual routes on the outside because getting a little man coverage on first down, but they're playing soft. But then after that, it's second and medium and long. Boston College is saying we're going to stay in zone and, and make you throw the ball in front of us. Chip Long, the offensive coordinator, scripts the first nine plays off that script on third downs. Hasn't been able to get Chase Claypool a shot just yet as one short catch. Jones trying to bounce, not going to do it. There's Brandon Barlow working across the line. The redshirt junior with the tackle. Here in the dying moments of this opening quarter, and the Irish facing third down. You see Barlow come through, but Boston College's idea is try to penetrate, get to the backfield, stop the insider. Actually, more concerned, Sheridan told us, Bill Sheridan, defense coordinator, more concerned about the outside runs than the inside runs because Notre Dame over the course of this year has not been able to hammer the ball up inside. Third down coming up, end of one, 3 0 Notre Dame. We're back after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on coming up in Sunday night, seven on the NBC Sports Predictor app. Over the next eight days, going to give out a total of $300,000 in guaranteed cash prizes across three contests, including a special Thanksgiving edition of Sunday night, seven. So get your picks in now on the Predictor app. Second quarter begins. The Irish are eight yards for a first down, 11 for a touchdown. 83 and 84 on the same side of the field. Claypool and Komet. Pressure comes, but gets rid of it. Claypool dropped it. Might have been a touchdown for Chase Claypool. He just couldn't pull it in, and the field goal unit's coming on. Boston College is making Ian Book a little uncomfortable with pressure coming off the edge. And there goes, I mean, this should be a touchdown. 
This is a ball that Claypool usually hits running and for some reason drops it. Ian Book does a great job of drifting a little bit, buying a fraction of a second and putting the ball out in front. Yeah, brought more than Notre Dame could block. He left everybody in man coverage. They were about to get burned, but Claypool couldn't hang on. 29 yard field goal attempt for Jonathan Dorr. Good from 47 earlier. Has this one from 29, and the Irish lead 6 0 as 10 of 12 on the season for Dorr. So they're up six, but they could have had six. Claypool could not hang on. So Boston College hanging in there right now, and A.J. Dillon is back on the field right now. Let's look inside the numbers presented by Amazon. Web Services, you talk about a powerful runner since he came to BC a couple of years ago. Yards after contact. He's like a pinball machine, bounces off the guys and keeps going. 2795. Think about that. It's like 900 yards a year after contact. Jonathan Taylor, the outstanding record center at Wisconsin, the only back above him. But look at the names behind him Travis Etienne, J.K. Dobbins. Now, those guys are often running scot free in these wide open spaces because of the spread offenses. But it gives you such a perspective for how good Dylan is, the school record holder in terms of rushing yards, Doug. No doubt about it. When he breaks a tackle, though, he's not the breakaway speed, so he's got to bang into somebody else and drive that guy for five yards. Those other elusive backs, when they break a tackle, it's 80 for a touchdown, so they get chunks of yards after contact or broken tackles. They're terrific blockers. They, they block their kick returns like it's a run game, too. It's going to have to be a bounce up and get their hands on it. That one was messed up. Bengal Lines finally gets it, and they'll only get out to the 15 yard line. A mistake by Travis Levy judging the wind. There's a flag down at the back end of this. It was thrown extremely late, and it was not a marshmallow. It's an actual flag this time. As the officials huddle, Notre Dame you have BC backed up for a third straight possession. But Aloe Gilman grabbing foul okay. for a face mask. First down. That looks like a miss. We'll go down to Ms. Tappen on the sidelines. Catherine? Well, Mike, I spoke to Tom Gatewood before the game, and he told me that his grandson, A.J. Dillon, tells him all the time that he's got big shoes to fill. And Gatewood says, I wear a 13, you're a 15. You've already <laughs> got more shoes filled than me. But he did say that he talks to his grandson a lot about the big stage playing here. He said they speak weekly and they compare notes. Gatewood said he can provide a different perspective than Dillon's coaches can for him, Mike. I love Catherine that A.J. told us his grandfather sends him a paragraph before every game, a little text, a motivational thought. He's out of the game for the moment. Grossell's in all kind of trouble. He puts it up. It's incomplete as Osmar Bilal was in coverage on the backup running back, David Bailey. The other part of this one two punch with Dylan. Yeah, trying to sneak Bailey down the backside. When Boston College goes play action and tries to throw the ball, they're looking for big chunk plays. They tried to sneak Bailey up the rail. A.J. Dillon, not so much a pass receiver as Bailey. No, he's not. Dillon only has 18 receptions in his career, three years. This is Bailey. Good run, solid run, nine yards. Chris Sims, it's not like you change uh, your personality a lot when you go to Bailey. He's 6'1, 240. No, your defense does not get a rest no matter who's in the game. And they're both, as you can see, just for that run by Bailey. Great change of direction for such a big guy. I'm just saying, sitting here on the field, man, are they impressive looking here in person. And certainly that size, both six feet, 240 and 250. This is the lighter one. It's Bailey pounding. For that extra yard, Lowy Gilman's got him like a wishbone on Thanksgiving, but it's a first down, and the chains will move for the Eagles on the run by David Bailey, sophomore from Ridgely, Maryland. Yeah, a lot of these isn't very impressive looking. You know, it's kind of for me ugly football. You know, they pound it out. No, he'll just grind, keep his legs moving, spin, put his back to the defender, push, fall forward, and get a first down. If you like old school, BC's your offensive school. Bailey toss left. They're effective doing it too. And it's uh, you said, Doug, as we were watching tape, both Dylan, both Dylan and Bailey, they fall forward so often. They get an extra yard or two out of almost every play. It's that same mentality as option football. Three or four yards is a win because you know you're going to run the ball three or four times to get that first down. Five there, Bailey out, Dylan back in, and he'll fall forward to the 34 yard line, too shy of the first down. The offensive coordinator is Mike Bajakian. Interesting, he was at Central Michigan before and after Brian Kelly was there. Mike is over there to the left. Thank you, Flutes. 
Falcons quarterback coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the last four years trying to add some pro ideas to this power run game. The BC has featured in the Steve Adazio era which should be a first down with forward progress at the 36 for Dillon. The bizarre thing is, as you watch this stuff, look at the elusiveness of a Busu Kormo or inside. I mean, it's still a first down and a couple of yards, but he's been in the backfield or making penetration all the time, three times already today. Off the run, they throw these play actions and they hit one for the first down to Kobe White, his 23rd catch on the year. In front of Troy Pride, right at midfield, and this is a vintage BC drive right now. Absolutely. A couple Flag first. Offense. Ten yard penalty. First down. You got the center, Alec Lidstrom. Lindstrom, whose brother Chris, first round pick with the Atlanta Falcons. This time the Richard sophomore Alex was called. Alec was called for the flag. His uncle Eric actually played with, with me back in ball, my Boston College days. But a little play action. Now you're trying to stop the run. You're trying to stop the run. You're leaving man-to-man -man coverage one-on-one, -on -one, and Boston College completes a pass. Flips had a 13-yard gain. Jameer Jones almost had that screen, but it's brought in by Dylan in space. Gets out to the 40-yard line. Good touch on the ball by the former baseball pitcher, Grossell. I was going to say, here's the baseball player in Grossell. The little touch, little finesse, flip it up and over, perfectly out in front of Dylan. It's a nice game to get a lot of the penalty yardage back. And then a few more. Turn in hand, Dylan. You see, good player in Usu Koromoa, Chris, who puts his head down there to make the tackle, and Dylan just bowls over. Dylan is, uh, you know, guys. When I talk about good players, his legs, his lower half is so impressive. <laughs> the other thing I like the Boston College is doing. You know, they keep you honest. You can't always pack in the box. They're just a swing pass, a toss play. So they will get on the edge and pull blockers and make it tough for a defense. Did you see how low Dylan got and stayed on his feet? Third and one, Grossell. We saw him gain six or seven yards on a quarterback sneak a few weeks ago against Syracuse. He's got one there for a first down, and this is the best of three C of the three BC drives in this opening half. I've seen a nine-yard quarterback sneak out of this kid. He, the great, <laughs> I, I, I get so frustrated with quarterbacks that bury their head and just kind of push and fall. He looks for a soft spot, keeps his head up, and keeps driving his legs. Those are the guys who paved the way, including 78, Tyler Vrabel. Toss Bailey. We get to the 48-yard line. So the quarterback we mentioned, he was the sixth string at one point. He was a walk-on, was bound for Butler as a baseball player. Instead, when he finished high school football and then high school, he said, hey, it's a chance at BC. But he wasn't going to jump right in, so he waited and rolled January of 2017. Scout team, sideline, earned a scholarship, back up before this season. And as I said, Anthony Brown gets hurt against Louisville. You're the starting quarterback for BC. This is his fifth start. As Bailey is stopped on the first foray for BC into Notre Dame territory. Well, stop for no gain is, is a big win defensively. There's Anthony Brown with that knee injury against Louisville. Has a year left of eligibility. Continue to improve as a thrower. He's seventh all time on BC's passing list. Topped by the guy to my right. Third and six. Designed right. Can Grossell find the space? He did. And he'll get the first down to the 40 yard line. Good run by the kid from just outside of Cleveland. And the drive stays alive, Chris. This is one of the great things they do. And this is Notre Dame. You almost have to play run still in these situations because they have a great quarterback draw and halfback draw game. We know Boston College, they want to run the ball. And the Irish have an injured player there on the back end of that. Steve Adasio is all fired up for his offense's play. Notre Dame's got concern with his shoulder for Colin Kareem. is brought to you by the all-new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. And by FanDuel, this season there's more ways to win on FanDuel. On senior day, some pictures of when they were youngsters and when they were kids. Some adorable shots of uh, the Notre Dame players who were honored on senior day, including Colin Kareem. 
they were looking at that left shoulder and they're going to bring him into the tent to assess the injury more. So we'll check on Kareem. Meantime, the Eagles on the move from the 40 Grossell takes the deep shot downfield for White, who brings it in. Boston College touchdown. Kobe White, a 40 yarder sensational drive. And the Eagles, an extra point from the lead. Watch the pass protection up front. Great job up front. This is the strength of this Boston College offense is the offensive line. A beautiful, beautiful throw by Grossell. Little out and up inside. I'll tell you, this ball is perfectly thrown. And talking to Steve Adazio yesterday at their walkthrough, he said, we're going to take some shots and go for the big plays down the field. And they hit on this one. Let's see. Is he down before the goal line? Here's the catch. Here's the knee. Is there enough there to say he is short of the goal line? As replay takes a look at it, we'll open up Terry McCauley and see what he thinks. Yeah, Mike, it appears that he's short from that angle. We really would rather have a down the line angle to be sure. Uh, I, at this point, I just don't think there's enough to overturn at this point. It's not indisputable the ball doesn't break the plane before the knee, uh, before the knee comes down. Right on those long shots, that camera that's usually right down the goal line is a little bit farther back. So you don't get that direct down the line look on that play. And then you say, as you said, you got to have indisputable video evidence. It feels like he's just shy of the goal line. But and you can't reverse on it, feels like. Exactly. The receiver was down with the ball at the one yard line. It will be placed at that spot. First and I goal. guess you can. The clock is correct <laughs> and will start on my signal. So White will not get his sixth touchdown of the season. But Boston College with that uh, great running team is a yard away from a chance to take the lead with a touchdown and extra point. Kobe White, the Richard Jr. from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And now the Irish fans trying to urge the defense for a goal line stand here. Their name's red zone defense has been Poor to say the least this year. 24 trips inside the 20, 23 times the opponent has scored. Dylan. Johnny Ogan and DJ first. Well, there's no movement. Actually, the offensive line gets pushed back by the Notre Dame front. It's a zone blocking scheme. There's just a push and a push back. And grossell has been so good at quarterback sneaks. I was wondering whether they'd go with him or go with their heavy duty backs. And they're obviously trying to get the ball to Dylan and let him drive. Officially lost of a half yard, second down. Toss, Dylan. Airborne, let's see if he's short. They say he came down short of the goal line. Drew White. The middle linebacker with the hit. He got clipped. He went airborne. Let's see where the plane is broken or not. Absolutely not. Drew White sells out two to get three yards deep in the backfield before hitting, and then Bill Isle gets the shoulder on AJ Dillon as he looks like he's going to the end zone, but Bill Isle gets him. Good look there. Clear around the bodies. Third and goal. Fake it, Grossell going to run it and walk it in for the touchdown. Terrific play call, and Dennis Grossell gets the one-yard touchdown run. Wusu Karamoa has contained. He comes in. Everyone's selling out to stop the run, but he's not the only one. Both tight ends totally uncovered. Quarterback naked bootleg walks in the end zone. And you have a couple of plays after the reversal of the touchdown. It becomes a 16 play, nearly seven minute drive. Grossell threw the 39 yarder. He runs it in. Aaron Bumeri, who kicked here when he was a kicker for Temple a few seasons ago, finishing his career. BC adds the extra point. And halfway through the second, Grossell leads the drive, closes the deal. And the team from Boston's on top. 7-6 Eagles. 
And on the day after Black Friday, the original six showdown. Bruins fans get the bees taking on the Rangers. Boston third in the NHL. Terrific start. 33 points. They're losing game seven of the cup final. So all you BC fans get a chance to see the Bruins take on the Rangers on the day after Thanksgiving on NBC. Catherine will be up there in Boston. Longman uses the wind. It's touchback. Irish take over at the 25 yard line. BC's D getting it done so far. No doubt about it. And on first down, this is a much maligned secondary. First down, they're sitting off. It might be man coverage on the outside, but they play softly. Then when they decide to go with a jam corner, they break on the balls underneath. It, it's all eight men drop and watch the quarterback and break on the ball. That's right. They're keeping, they're keeping the receivers in front of them. They want to rally and tackle. I'd like to see a little bit of the three-step game. Hitch routes, slant routes, shallow crosses, things like that. Let Komet, Claypool get the ball and run with it. From the 25, there is movement again. Notre Dame flagged twice early on, and Eichenberg was one of the two early ones. We got full start, number 74, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. And Chris, you start with uh, drives with penalties, and then all of a sudden you look up the board halfway through the second, you're losing this game. Right, that's exactly what I'm going to say. I don't care. This is big-time college football. You drop a touchdown pass, you have some penalties. I don't care who you're playing. You're going to be in a ball game. All three forced fault starts on first and 10. So first and 15, that pass is brought in by Komet. Strong mitts to hang on to that one. And his pile is pushed forward. He's a yard shy of the first down. Jared Patterson, the center, came to add one more hit, and Komet is slow to get up after that gain of 14. But that's the first attitude play for Notre Dame, where there's the extra effort, they're grinding for an extra yard or two. I mean, that's a heck of a catch because the ball's out in his fingertips as he's getting hit, stays fighting with it, guys getting ball, push the pile. Notre Dame's got to pick up the intensity. Took a shot from the side on the way down. After the gain of 14, here is Book again with pressure forced out. Puts it up and just tries to get rid of it out of bounds since he's out of the tackle box, and he does. And it's incomplete, setting up third and short. It's really a five-man rush. We're coming on the outside edge and then late up inside. And it's, it's cluttering the picture for Ian Book. He can't step up and deliver the football. He's got to move. He's had to move off his spot all day so far. And again, taking another hit. As a novice, it feels like watching those, all the receivers are deep. There's not that short adjustment with the routes that Chris was alluding to earlier. Third and one. Fink comes across from the end around to give inside to Joni Jones Jr. Is able to slice through for the first down in a gain of 11. Well, and Borger said who got the start today made the tackle. Well, that time Boston College had the line of scrimmage crowded everybody up. Blitz, zero coverage, no free safety. Almost broke it into the secondary, would have been gone. Eagles jumping around up front. Fink is open. He's got it right around midfield. He'll be brought down after a gain of six. The Irish were recruiting Malik Zaire, the quarterback. And they saw this kid on tape. It was pretty good at punt returns. A defensive back got on the radar. Ended up being a preferred walk-on. Earned his scholarship a couple of years ago. And as a senior, he's got 30 catches. He's a captain, and he is a tone-setting, example-setting leader for this Notre Dame program. Claypool underneath took a hot shot, but he holds on. He's got the first down with Borgerson again on the tackle. Hey, hey, that's what I like right there, though. Let's just get Komet, get Claypool the ball. We've seen Boston College has had trouble tackling all year. Other thing I'll say, too, guys, when, when Ian Book does see man-to-man, -man, the bright light's got to go on and just play 83 one-on-one -on -one ball. Might have it right here. At the 42, instead it'll be a give. Sebo Flemister has come in the lineup, and Flemister will run for two yards. As Chris was saying with the quick rhythm, the last two plays before that were three-step drop plays. Little indecisive on the first one, broke under Claypool on a hitch route on the outside. He had to come all the way backside. And then the second one, he got what he wanted on the slant route inside. So Chip Long, offense coordinator, going to some of the quick rhythm stuff, try to get Ian Book in rhythm. And John Lamott for Boston College is down, holding his leg. So as the athletic training staff checks on him, we'll step out. With apologies to the terrific Notre Dame marching band. Do you want some bands? 
show up for the 46th annual Bayou Classic in New Orleans next week in Grambling State and Southern. The marching band, that battle. There's tradition, there's sportsmanship, and there's good football too. Grambling's won six in a row. They're six and four, and Southern is seven and four. That's the Bayou Classic next Saturday, 5 Eastern on NBCSN. Look at that. Grambling on a roll, and the SWAC title game spot is on the line. Enjoy that one a week from today on NBCSN. Second and seven off the injury timeout. Tony Jones Jr. runs for a yard to the 38 yard line. We can tell you John Lamont, who limped off earlier, and able to put some pressure on his leg, but they're looking at his right knee in the BC sideline injury tent. Third down here, Doug. I was taking a look at that last play, and it was the first time that Claypool actually had a true one on one on the outside where it looked like they could have thrown that ball out there. But see, he's out. He's out wide now, but there's going to be a safety over the top. He's down here at the bottom, and there's a safety over the top, his side, all the time. Coming corner blitz. Claypool working across the field. They react to him. He spins through, uses that physicality to get the first down at the 32 yard line. That's why there was a safety over the top, because you're bringing the corner behind, underneath it. But if you move Claypool, even though they play soft zone or zone somewhere, if you move him, bring him across the formation or inside routes, you can still get him the ball. Big numbers has uh, exploded the last three games to add to this senior season. Book protected, throws behind Claypool there, and Brandon Sebastian, who's been seeing a lot of number 83 for the Irish, was there in coverage. He, he, Ian Book misses just a little of the inside. He gets hit here. At the end, the ball was inside. I, oh, a little helmet to helmet, but um, I think Claypool didn't see that ball until the last instant. That was not that far off the mark inside that he usually would adjust to that and didn't pick it up. CBC showing five up front jumping around. They have been less vanilla today. They show on tape. They drop out of that pressure. Tommy Tremble, the tight end, catches it. Into the 24 yard line. Chris, they are really mixing it up. They use their bye week to add some to their defensive package. They definitely did, Mike. I mean, they are the safeties. Just watch them, linebackers. There's a lot of communication and movement before the snap. They're trying to keep Chip Long, uh, you know, just from grooving with the play calls and trying to confuse Ian Book before the snap. Here's your safeties deep. I mean, we just saw a complicated blitz zone. Be hard to describe in about two seconds. You're right. It's third and three. <laughs> Book's keeping off the hands of Komet and Notre Dame. Could not convert there. Interesting to see. They go for the field goal here or try to get the first down on fourth and three. I think you got to create a little attitude. The Notre Dame is being very sloppy so far this game, and they've got to create some attitude. Go for it here. Stick the ball in the end zone. I mean, Komet never drops that ball, and that's a first down conversion if he holds on. The play before I was talking about, I mean, they're mm -hmm. bringing two off one edge, rotating the safety over the top, dropping a defensive out, weak side. Giving him a lot of looks. Fourth and three. Look protected, throws complete, and Chris Fink gets the first down at the 17 yard line in front of Isaiah McDuffie. I was eyeing a one on one matchup weak side for Claypool, but it was a safe route that Chris, Chris Fink runs. So you got Claypool one on one. You want to take a shot, but this is a 50 50 ball on a fade route. You don't throw it on fourth and short. Pivot route by Fink. Gets open right at the first down marker. Nice route. Five catches today for Fink. The 18 pressure picked up by Flemister. Book throwing incomplete. Try to come back to the moving Claypool on the sideline. 318 here till halftime. 7-6 Boston College. That was an all-out blitz. And I don't think Ian Book is quite deciphering what he's seeing in front of him right now because he had a shot down the middle of the field there for Comet. He's got to pick the one on one. He did pick a one on one on the outside, but a, a downfield comeback route is a lot tougher to hold on to versus blitz than just a guy running down the middle. Claypool gets a break. Book throwing to the middle, and the tight end's open there. Come back to the five yard line. First and goal, Notre Dame. Great protection and great patience in the pocket for Ian Book. He wants to throw a wheel route down the left side, doesn't have it, comes back to the under, the under's not there, and then hits tight end in the middle of the field, Tommy Tremble. Great job going left to right, at least his third read. And Claypool down here, bottom of the screen when we come live, first and goal from the six. Book, Claypool, touchdown, Notre Dame! <laughs> Carry on. So many 
so many fade routes lately to Claypool on the outside. So you want to win, you're afraid of the, the fade route. He runs the slant. Boom, foot in the grass. See ya. Almost nothing Brandon Sebastian yeah. can do in that situation. Chase Claypool with his sixth touchdown in the last four games. That is 10 touchdowns on the season. And Jonathan Doerr's extra point makes it 13 7 Notre Dame. 15 play drive, 75 yards down the field, most of it in the air in his final game in Notre Dame Stadium. Chase Claypool to the end zone for the 16th time in his Notre Dame career. State Farm halftime report from South Bend. Liam McHugh, Chris Sims on the field. Look at the Ohio State victory over Penn State. Got tight in the second half and Hope you join us. We have a terrific look, a very different look at the 35th anniversary of the Doug Flutie Hail Mary to Gerard Phelan. All coming up on the State Farm Halftime here from South Bend on NBC. Over on NBCSN, they're all here at the stadium. Ahmed Farid, Dalen Hayes, the injured Irish defensive lineman, among those in that uh, ND fan feed for the Irish homer out there. NBCSN, those guys doing the broadcast right now. Now, Brian Kelly grew up a Notre Dame fan, even though he was in Boston. Let me go back to Brian's Massachusetts roots, if you will. He grew up in Everett, Mass, not too far from BC's campus. But BC football wasn't so huge, even during his days when he was raised in Chelsea, a dozen miles or so from Newton. So he went to Danvers, St. John's Prep, his high school days, then played college ball at Worcester. Nice shot of Brian there when he was at Assumption College. And uh, his path included some work in the political world uh, for a time in Boston before he started down the coaching route. He's no, never lost to BC, his hometown team, if you will. David Bailey, first down carry, four yard. Great story Brian was telling us about you know, going to prep schools 40 minutes away from home. So he was waiting at the supermarket and doing his homework, waiting for his dad to pick him up to take him back home. So he never really became a big football fan or sports fan. Except for the play that he did, a tight end pass is incomplete, intended for Hunter Long. He was playing three different sports, including football. He was more of a hockey guy growing up than anything else, though. Well, he was at St. John's Prep when Bobby Carpenter was at St. John's Prep, and Bobby Carpenter, a uh, Hall of Fame hockey player. Of course, my high school had a guy that outscored him. I, I keep telling Bobby that every time I see him. But yeah, hockey fan, no doubt. Boston College was not a big deal then, and, and it wasn't a college town, so. He never affiliated himself with that. Yeah, he didn't grow up loving BC, even though that was the hometown college football team. Grew up a Notre Dame fan, as many fans did because of the national scope of the Irish program. Third and nine. This is not a down. BC succeeds on often. Grossell trying to do it with his feet. Says, take that. Good run, Grossell. Near midfield and a first down. Jameer Jones eventually the tackle. Well, Tyler Vrabel out on the left side gets a little takedown right in the middle. Could have been called, but Grissel has shown some savvy and some athleticism so far today. 24 yard rush. He's looking deep. It's covered. He'll come underneath to Bailey, who's down after the gain of a yard at the 49. We mentioned Tyler Vrabel earlier. His dad is watching. The Titans head coach finished their walkthrough. They play Jacksonville tomorrow. Told me yesterday he'd be there, a chance to see his son play. He's been able to see Tyler in person a few times. Of course, Mike played here when he was an Ohio State Buckeye back in the 80s. Run for a yard there. It'll be third down coming up. And a timeout taken here. There is Mike and little Tyler who made Bill Belichick smile timeout. ear to ear on one of those Super Bowl wins. There he is out there on the practice field before the Patriots training camp. And he got to hang around Belichick and Vrabel and Tom Brady and all those folks. And Catherine Tappen, Tyler Vrabel. Good freshman year here at BC. Yes, indeed, Mike. And I spoke to him this week. He said his dad emphasizes two things, effort and finish. He said his dad tells him, if you've got any questions, ask me. But as long as you go hard, I'll love you no matter what. Now, get this. During a workout at Boston College last spring, Patriots quarterback Tom Brady was also training at the Eagles facility that day. He sought out Tyler Vrabel to say hello. Tyler's father, of course, Mike, played in those three Super Bowls with Brady. Tyler told me it was pretty cool to bump into him. He's one of my dad's best friends. Still to this day, they were teammates for eight years but Mike Tyler got quite a bit of heat from his teammates on that one when Tom Brady seeks you out of practice 
you know you're going to get a ribbing. Well, well, he should. And, uh, you know, a guy who grew up around the NFL and a ground around really one of the great all time runs in NFL history. So this guy's going to come in here and be very well aware of handling the pressures of being a left tackle. Here he is as a red shirt freshman is graded very well. Pro football focus has him as the second best pass blocker amongst tackles in the ACC. So an aim to watch in the future. Tyler Vrabel. Third down here out of the Irish timeout. BC converted the last third down with the legs of Grossell. Blitz coming. Balls out. And it is recovered by the center, Alec Lichstrom. Adi Ogundeje got a big arm in there and forced the fumble. BC lucky not to turn it over. Timeout Notre Dame. Pressure coming from both sides of the field, coming off the edge, and then watch Sean Crawford coming scot free. And that's what Grosell sees, so he doesn't pay attention to Okandeje coming around the backside and stripping the ball. His eyes are left looking at an unblocked rusher. Nice strip of the ball, and that's such a smart play. Go for the ball, don't go for the big blow up shot. Make sure you can strip that ball and get it loose. However, Boston College falls on the ball. You see Ogundeji there on the right, Doug, for West Bloomfield, Michigan. We've talked a lot about Khalid Kareem, the injured players, and Dalen Hayes and Julian O'Quara, who those defensive ends. But Ogundeji, another one of that group with Michigan ties, who has come in, went from a three star who was originally committed to Western Michigan to a significant role. He had a sack in that college football playoff game against Clemson, had the fumble return touchdown against Virginia this year. And with all the injuries, including Khalid Kareem getting dinged in this game, the depth has been tested. Logan Deje, the answer there. So the Irish use the two timeouts, preserve some time on the clock. Here's Grant Carlson to kick it away. Fink goes back and gets a 50 yarder using the sideline to get some space. And a good job to get it out of bounds. The Irish have a long field. One timeout and a minute 18 to the break. Minute 18 left, the Irish have one timeout. BC gets the ball to start the second half. Doug, you made an interesting point about Brian Kelly during the break. Absolutely. Inside your own 20 here, he is going to stay aggressive. Because of the way Ian Book has been playing lately, lately this will show his confidence in Ian to go after. From the 17, this drive begins. Book underneath. A big hit on Lawrence Keyes up high. Gain of five. Get Notre Dame one timeout to the 22-yard line. And it was a big 10 yard return by Fink to get you in a position to try to stay aggressive. The first first down picked up in a two minute drill off and builds momentum and the Irish will again it was double caught so it's going to be incomplete don't know if Komet even hung on on the sideline. Brandon Sebastian the coverage and all of a sudden it's third and five with 55 seconds till halftime with the coverage that Boston College is playing kind of a soft zone what we call Tampa 2 where middle linebacker gets deep in the middle of the field those outside throws are difficult right now so look for a shot down the middle of the field third and five and they're going to run for it here and get the first down with Tony Jones room to run across the 40 to the right at the 40 they're going to mark it Clock stops to move the chains. Irish won't use the timeout. Great call by Chip Long. Great job on that play, actually, by Cole Komet sealing the edge. Notre Dame exchange receivers on the side of the field, so a little late to get this snap off. It's a book run. He's going to get, let's see, but the slide marked the 50. Another first down. They use that final timeout here. Not if you Look, have. Mark Short. Mark Short. Mark Short, it's running. Yeah. But second down. The official on the far side ran it in on the midfield stripe. So key seconds tick off the clock and book throws sideline scoop and caught what a catch by Claypool for the first down and out of bounds so the Irish will stop it with 20 seconds left. But I agree with you if that ball's marked short of the first down you call the timeout. I think Notre Dame was unsure and was starting the line up to run a play anyway so went with it. But Claypool's made several of those oh. great sideline catches great body control 20 seconds left book looking to take off and he will go down now to take a timeout here. Final one, 15 seconds left. Richard Yergin, a graduate student. I mentioned he went to Clemson. He fractured the C5 and the C7 vertebrae in a car crash back two years ago. Set out last year after being injured again. And here he is, love of the game, staying out there, and he makes a big play. If you're just joining us, here's the Pulse brought to you by Bright House Financial. A.J. Dillon, one of the top rushers in the country, held in check on eight carries so far. The longest run of the day and the running touchdown belongs to Dennis Grossell, the quarterback, capping off that 16 play drive. Notre Dame came back down the field, Chase Claypool, sixth in the last four games. 
10th on the year. He's the 11th Irish receiver to have double digit touchdown grabs in a season. And all that has gotten us to what you see on the screen. Well, 10 yards puts you in legitimate field goal range. The clock will be running if you're in the middle of the field. You do not want to throw a ball less than 10 yards. You want to be past the first down marker so the clock stops. You can reset and spike the ball if you're in the field of play. Otherwise, you're on the sideline hoping. Do you like pressure from BC here? I would I would like pressure, but they're bailing out. Four-man rush. From the 42, here is Book in the pocket. Everything covered. He scrambles and launches downfield towards Komet, who's bodied, and a flat. It'll take the ball. Not all the way down there, but at least in field goal range with six seconds left. And we'll see what Brian Kelly decides to do if, in fact, this is pass interference on the Eagles. Pass interference. Number eight, defense, 15 yard penalty, and an automatic first down. To be the 25, field goal attempt will be 43. Was that tangled feet, Terry McCauley, or pass interference? It looks like they're both playing the ball to me, Mike. I, I don't see anything overt. They do tangle feet. They're both playing the ball. Little bit of a grab, yeah, but the, the tangle feet is really what sends him to the ground. Yeah, maybe the grab is the second flag that was thrown by the official. The tangle feet is not a pass interference, but the grab may have been the call. So it's a 45 yard field goal attempt for Dorr to end this half. Six seconds remaining. And Dorr's kick is good. So perfectly handled two minute drill and Jonathan Dorr kicks his third field goal of the game and Doug there is a definite untold story that was a question of this Notre Dame team this year for Brian Kelly the performance by his kicker Jonathan Dorr throughout this season he's been outstanding. Yeah special teams coach Brian Poley and had some sleepless nights last spring and thinking about this season. And he has answered the call. Jonathan Doerr's done a fantastic job all year. Has a strong leg. They always knew that, but consistent now this year. All right, so 16-7 here at the half. What, what do you think so far this first half? Well, I think BC's got to be happy with what they've done. Come up with some stops. Notre Dame is now catching their footing offensively, figuring it out what to do offensively, and gaining that momentum. Yeah, BC's defensive pressure has really been a surprise here because what we have seen on tape from the Eagles is not what we've seen on the field. So yeah, no doubt about it. Doing some twisting up front that's given the offensive line for Notre Dame some fits, and also just take them some risk and, and blitz and bring in extra bodies. And why not? You're five and five. You have to have a signature win. You need one of the last two to get to a bowl. That is touched, covered, and we're at half. Notre Dame 16, Boston College 7. At the break, we're back at Notre Dame Stadium for the State Farm halftime after these messages. And a word from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Presented by Bright House Financial. Football presented by Bright House Financial. Last half of the season here in South Bend. We'll take a look at the first half stats presented by FanDuel. Two to one in yards for Notre Dame. Really, most of the yards of BC came on that one drive. They had 84 of their 127. Doug, you were going to talk about the rushing yards. 66. Yes. Hold, hold them to 66. Holding Boston College to 66 rushing yards is fantastic. I mean, really shut it down. There was one drive where BC kind of got it going. And then after that touchdown, Notre Dame shut him down again. So great run defense. Great kickoff by Dorr. It's a touchback. And we'll go down to the sideline and Catherine Tappen. Mike, Brian Kelly just told me his team was sloppy early on. He said Boston College did some things that we hadn't seen already. That's because they had the week off last week to prepare, and we just didn't execute. Steve Adazio, he was happy with his team's 18-play drive, but he said we've got to be more consistent. Be physical, wear on them. He thought his defense was playing well, and he loves the play of his quarterback, but he knows that this is just a one score game at this point. There's a lot more football to be played, he said, Mike. Hey, Tap, you have a semester of eligibility left. <laughs> that was Going awesome. Catch another ball. <laughs> First time around, Rutgers can use a pass catcher like that. <laughs> Thank Great you. Great stuff, Catherine, from the 25. A.J. Dillon on the carry. Gains only two. He has been held in check. Just to go back, this was first time that we tried this the other day, yesterday. Look oh at Catherine. Goodness. That was over a 50-yard throw. Yes, that ball was. was carrying. She yes, had to track it and backpedal. <laughs> she got her hands up, and it, uh, that was amazing, Tap. Thank time wasted as a my, track my athlete. My hands are still burning. My fingertips are gone, but you're welcome. Grossell on the run here. It'll get across the 30. Pull forward, too, to the 32-yard line. A tackle there. We have an injured Irish player back behind the play as well as the action was flowing towards the near sideline. Myron Tungo Vailoa Amosa went down quickly and Kurt Heinish his partner over there next to him at defensive tackle was over there attending uh, to his teammate. 
And he is injured. The Irish have taken a lot of injuries up front. Dalen Hayes out for the season. Torn labrum. Julian Aquar broke his fibula. Jason Adami, Adami Lola injured his ankle against Navy. He's not available today for the Irish. They're really down to uh, three interior players on the defense. And now Tango Valoa Mosa, who's had a, a fine season, gets injured. Let's watch him on the back side of the play. See if someone falls into yeah, that. Heinish, you know what? Heinish got blocked and knocked down and into the side of the leg of, leg of Tango Valoa Mosa. Uh, Brian Kelly out there showing his concern for the junior defensive lineman, who, of course, is the cousin, first cousin of. To Watango Vailoa from Alabama, and we saw the injury he suffered last week. Tua had that hip surgery on Monday, returned to Tuscaloosa, and as a matter of fact, uh, came out on a cart before the game to watch today. And now uh, his cousin, Myron Tango Vailoa Amosa, helped off. And as you were saying, he and Heinish inside have been the workhorses all year long and already thin in the interior line and facing a very, very physical running attack and offensive line for Boston College. And he broke his foot last year against Michigan and came back to play in the playoffs. So Jacob Lacey, the freshman, is in the lineup here for the Irish on the inside. As their depth across that front, as mentioned, you look up and they only have two players on that front of their first seven or eight options when the season started. 33 Grossell play action up top for his tight end and can't get it to Jake Burton. It's incomplete and it's fourth down. Jalen Elliott was dropping back in coverage on Burton. Elliott does a great job staying one on one because he has no help as Burton walks off, looks a little bit banged up. Yep. Why no one in the middle of the field you got one on one all over the field he's doing a good job Grossell is giving ground and laying it up for him but it's a tough throw because of blanketed coverage it, had, it would have had to have been perfect and it's the pressure by Notre Dame that forces the incompletion. Grant Carlson pressured in trouble and they let's see do not call running into or roughing the kicker wonder if he got a piece of it as the ball comes out to the 20 yard line or he was moving. One of the two. In any case, it's a 48 yard kick with no return. Bo Bauer, the pressure inside for the Irish, got blocked into the kicker. No flag, Notre Dame ball. Notre Dame football is brought to you by U.S. Bank. Unlock your possible by Microsoft Surface. And by Jersey Mike's subs, be a sub above. Alohi Gilman, one of the players with eligibility left who's coming back. Colin Cream does not have eligibility left. Now this Chris Fink. And the moms and the dads all there on senior day for those hugs, the appreciation of the support from the parents over all these years. You know, what a journey it's been for players like Fink and others. Four or five years of their life and uh, life changing too. Their time at Notre Dame. Senior days happening around the country the next couple of weeks. First down, Claypool with the catch, and he'll get a first down out to the 32 yard line. I bring Terry McCauley, our rules analyst, back in. Terry, why no running into the kicker or roughing the kicker on this play? Well, Mike, I think it should have been. All he does is give him a little bit of push that adds some, some momentum to the direction he's already going. This is not blocked into the kicker and should have been a foul for running into the kicker. Okay, it was not. So Notre Dame takes over. Claypool gets the first down and 12. Tony Jones Jr. with an edge run across the 35 yard line. As the Irish look to continue, they have scored on four of their five drives, but three of them have been field goals so far. That's why it's a nine point game. Yeah, but a real nice start to this drive. Got one on one coverage on the outside. Claypool come back, hit the slant. Nice gain. The run to the outside. That was actually a very nice cut by Tony Jones. Get back north and south. Good start for Notre Dame. From the 35, Komet inside trying to lead the way, but getting to the line of scrimmage was Jones. As Marcus Valdez came in to bring him down. Lost of a couple and third down coming up now. 
Eichenberg gets beat a little bit at left tackle, but it's the commitment to the run by everyone up in there. No one's giving ground, stepping forward rather than stepping back. Or maybe you get a run key early in that, and everyone stepped forward. There was no deception at all, so it was more like an eight-man front. Jafar Armstrong is in the game for the Irish. He's in a slot here on third and eight. And Book double clutches. Fires inside. Great catch by Claypool. The window was small. The catch was tough, but he made it, and it's a first down for Notre Dame. I'm thinking don't pull the trigger. He's on his hip. Claypool running. It's Sebastian in coverage on Claypool. Great patience on the pocket. Step, step, step. Perfect throw out in front. And he had to put it in front firmly to get it in there. You can't cover it any better. Has seven catches now for Claypool. 16 catches for Claypool, Komet, and Fink. Pressure coming. Book escaping. Getting the edge block from Claypool and getting a first down. The Claypool showing some of the other things that will be watched closely here in the NFL. Ian Book, uh, his feet moving there. It's been a very difficult season for Ian Book, but that man on the left, Tom Reese, has been such a big help. Former Irish quarterback, the quarterback's coach, such a great set of ears and a comforting person for Ian Book. From the 41, pressure comes and Book will throw it sideline through the hands of Claypool and incomplete. You know, it's there's a lot of pressure, especially at Notre Dame being the starting quarterback. And there's those moments, especially after the Michigan game, where Notre Dame struggle got blown out, and Ian's feeling the pressure. Ian Book, you know, he knows it. He has a confidant, Tommy Reese, a guy that's been there before, had to deal with Brian Kelly, lighten him up on the sideline, even worse than Ian has ever had. And he understands, and he's got a confidant in his meeting room. So he's like a best friend, but he knows how to flip the switch and become my coach when he needs to be that as well. That time they give to Jones inside, and that is a race. It's a four tackles for loss for BC so far today. And Tanner Carafa with that one. The third down coming up. Ian Book was very honest with us when he said uh, last uh, yesterday, I should say, he said after the Michigan game, 100% you could feel, feel the pressure in the building. And that continued to mount as we went through that Virginia Tech game. But Book ran for the touchdown. It's been pretty good 11 quarters since then. But he puts a lot of faith and credit into Tom Reese, who knows exactly what he's going through as the Notre Dame quarterback. Third and 11, Book decides to keep it, used a stiff arm, but couldn't get very far. Elijah Jones, who's been in a nickel situation, came in and made another nice play. And the Irish will punt it away on fourth down. A lot of twisting up front, a five-man rush for Boston College. Watch a twist loop around, come inside. You know, it, it just, they're creating some pressure and getting angles to push through. And it's cluttering, even if Ian Book has people open, it's cluttering his view. He can't set his feet and deliver the ball on time. But, you know, he's made so many plays with his legs. BC's defense could have played like this earlier in the season. This could be a better than 5-5 five five team. Bramlett just put it up in the air to pin it inside the 20. Fair caught by Travis Levy at the 15. 10-17 left here in the third. Irish still on top, but they lead only by nine. To take on Jimmy Garoppolo and the 9 and 1 49ers. We'll start with football night in America, 7 Eastern Time. Head coach of the Packers, Matt LaFleur, defensive coordinator for the 49ers, Robert Sala. They'll be going head to head. They were on Brian Kelly's Central Michigan staff when Brian got started there before he went to Cincinnati. So, uh, guys who know each other will be matching wits, play calling tomorrow night. A.J. Dillon, first down run for the Eagles. Not going to go anywhere. No gain downstairs to Catherine. Well, guys, Myron Tungo Vailoa Amosa came out of the tent and he walked up to his teammates in the defensive huddle and started giving them all a hug. Uh, a very emotional moment. No update yet on his leg, but they were working on it and uh, we'll get you some information as soon as we can. But it looks like he might be done for the day. Yeah, guys. Looking around there, Catherine. Thank you. So the Irish are young on the inside there. See, BC can take advantage of their run game. But St. Grossell is throwing and he's going down. Ogandiji started it. But Gofu finished it. The pressure from the defensive ends forced the sack. Boy, if he could have found them and hung on a second. And this is what pressure does. I mean, they're coming, right? They're coming. Watch A.J. Dillon. It, uh, you lose him out of screen, but A.J. Dillon came scot free down the middle field. But it took too long because of the pressure. Notre Dame staying aggressive. 
there's Ogadiji. You saw him break free after he and Drew White banged into each other. Third and 12. Jailbreak running at Grossell. Just throws it at the feet of Dylan. It's incomplete. Jacob Lacey, the freshman with the pressure. That is a quick three and out for this Notre Dame defense. Lacey, the freshman getting in there. You know, need to play, get in there, bang up people inside. Sure enough, 54 is going to make a play and get pressure. It's a screen. Boston College does a great job. They're very creative with their screen game. They use their tight ends in it, their backs. Notre Dame is sniffing everything out so far. It's getting cooler temperature in the 30s. See if Carlson can get good distance on this kick. No, Chris Fink runs up and makes the fair catch and the Irish will get great field position at the Boston College 47. Second time Notre Dame will start on the Eagles side of midfield. Come a senior day tradition. There's a marshmallow fight amongst the fans, the students, I should say, at least at halftime. They sneak them in, bring them in, they make the final home game a lot of fun. Chris Sims, have you been the target? I have. I've let them in. I've been open shots a few times oh. during TV timeouts. I said, go ahead. And I've headbutted a few of them and got some crowd, uh, got some noise from the, the student great. section. Throw them back, man. I have that too. Don't worry. You know me. From the 46, here is Book looking Claypool's way. And the double coverage. There was a hand on him, and the pass is ruled incomplete with no flag. Well, here was Chris earlier. Oh, great. Is he a soccer player? Yeah. Maybe we can send you in tomorrow morning early for Premier League coverage. We can just go right there and go sit with Rebecca and stay out of our hair tomorrow. Oh, good. I've got somebody caught that on camera. It, it, just, <laughs> it amused the student body, I can tell you that. Full fledged knucklehead from the 46, second and 10. <laughs> Book escapes, resets, looking downfield. Everybody's covered, so he scrambles and gains six. And that has been a lot of what Ian Book has done today. 11 runs so far. Well, that one wasn't necessarily out of pressure. It was just a soft zone, and there was nothing open. Sebo Flemister kind of let his man slip away a little bit, so Ian Book gets on the move and out on the perimeter. And there's really nothing down the field for a quick throw. Sebo got beat right away, by the mm -hmm. way. And I tell you, Ian Book extends plays. Richard Yergin brought the pressure. Third and four for Notre Dame. Picked up here, and Book fires to Fink. Chris Fink to the 26 yard line. He'll pick up a Notre Dame first down, gain of 14. Just a great feel in the pocket by Book. Drifting to his left, subtle feet, sliding and moving, and then drills it. He'll drift left just to buy a little time and get a window and then snap throw back into the middle of the field to think. That's a great feel. Catch number six as you see for Chris. 34 on the year. This is a throw to Cole Komet, the tight end. His arm was pulled down by Marcus Valdez. A flag comes down. Komet uh, had his hand back there. He was trying to stiff arm the defensive end and had his hand up by the headgear. See which way this crew will go. Six accepted penalties no in the game. For a face mask. Open palms. Take it out. I still don't think that should. Hey, he's closed it a little bit on that face mask, didn't he? Terry McCauley, what is the uh, line of delineation between a stiff arm and a face mask? He cannot grasp and turn, twist, or pull the face mask of the defender here, and it sure looks like he pulls him down by it. I never liked it anyway. I don't think you should be allowed to stiff arm in the face. But I'm not writing a rule book. Second and two. Book chooses to keep it. Comet in the open field is brought down. That's Jameen Muse. Yet again, the sophomore from Elizabeth, New Jersey. And Mike Palmer, that ankle injury was supposed to be a part of the story today. Has not recovered significantly from that, so it's been a lot of Muse along with Nolan Bergerson. Borgerson at safety for BC. And even though he's a he's a fifth year guy, there's not a lot of experience at the safety position right now on the field for Boston College. Muse playing that deep safety back there for third and three. Five in the pattern. Incomplete for Braden Lindsay. Hasn't been thrown to yet today. The sophomore who had the 70 yard touchdown reception last week. Brandon Sebastian did a good job to prevent the catch. Really nice job. A lot of open space, wide side of the field, giving a little ground. Boom, the ball's got to be there. It, he closes in a hurry and the ball comes out. See if it's accurate. Just a hut. Just, ah, that's right on the money. Great job by Sebastian getting the hand in there. 
So the very busy Jonathan Door for number four. 37 on this one. John Shannon snaps it. Jay Bramlett, the holder. This one off the right hash, and this one as well. Right through. What a game for Jonathan Door. Irish extend the lead to 12. 19 7, halfway through the third here in South Bend. Read the National Dog Show around lunchtime, and then after you enjoy dinner, Join us, we'll be in Atlanta for the Falcons and the Saints on Thanksgiving night to wrap up the NFL day. Of course, Boston College's third all-time leading passer, Matt Ryan, the resurgence with the Falcons. You know number one is Flutie, you know Ryan's number three, you know number two is in yards. You know, you can't say. Oh. Glenn Foley. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, 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 you're oh. answer to a question. Levy decides to bring it out. Oh, my. And he is stopped shy of the 20-yard line. He regrets that decision. The coverage for the Irish with the big hit. As you see, this uh, all the players involved in this hit. Everybody gets up. Bauer with the terrific special teams coverage, the backup middle linebacker, but Alohi Gilman on the other side was injured, and the Irish captain, as the athletic training staff, looking at his. Right ankle. The terrific season Gilman has had. We detailed it during the Navy game last week. Played at Navy, then transferred to Notre Dame, and uh, has had a terrific Irish career to this point. Let's get a game break now. Liam McHugh. Liam. Thanks, Mike. You just showed us physical football. How about smart football? Harvard, Yale, 136 playing of the game. Yale was down 17 in the fourth. They force OT in double overtime. St. Judex scores. Bulldogs up. Then Yale comes up with the stop here. We had climate change protesters on the field at the half. Fans on the field at the end of the game. Yale wins. They clinch a share of the Ivy League title. Yeah, they do. Yeah, it was an, an interesting scene there. Uh, school students protesting climate change and Puerto Rican debt relief. Uh, the halftime started at 140. Usually it takes some 20 minutes. The second half didn't start till 248 Eastern time. So they use that uh, venue for a big protest at the big game. Here's a run for Levy around the edge. That doesn't go very far at all. It's a gain of only two yards. Let's go back to that kickoff the injury to Lohi Gilman. He winds up getting rolled up by his own player. Jeremiah Usu Cormoa got pushed back yes. into him. And Catherine Tappen on that chilly sideline tells us that Gilman is being taped at the moment. Second and eight, BC, a great running team, keeps throwing it here. Inside screen to Hunter Long. Couple yards out of the first down, replacing Gilman, Kyle Hamilton, the safety with the tackle. There's an example of what I was talking about creative screen play. Boston College is looking. For a big play somewhere. There's Kyle Hamilton. He's had a heck of a freshman year. Been in the mix since day one. Third and one. They're going to try to run it for that yard, and they will get it. They'll get two with David Bailey. So that'll keep the drive going. And a first down at the 29 yard line. Six minutes left here in the third. BC down a dozen. For big backs, Bailey. And Dylan both they get low and drive. Keep the legs going. Stay low. Fall forward. Both have been held relatively in check. Grossell pulls it down. Lost the football on the twist. And it's recovered by Drew White of the Irish. He was spun around, got tagged. Colin Kareem injured earlier. Was right in the middle of that spot where the hit happened. And on the turnover, the Irish have it in great field position. Well, Grossell, in the footage we've seen, runs tough. He wants to put his head down. He wants to be a tough runner, get every yard. Look at Gets Kareem. into the mix. Kareem grabs it, rips it, pulls at it. It's out. The first turnover of the day. Kareem, who forced two fumbles against Navy. I think his left hand is what mm. does the work there. It's the pull down. Lawn lawnmower start. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Drew White with the recovery. Good angle there to see Grossell was not down. So, golden position for the Irish. We'll see if, see if they take a shot. No, they'll run it with Jones into the boundary for seven on first down to the 33 and BC has a player down as Brandon Sebastian took the worst of that and he's over in front of the Notre Dame sideline and their athletic training staff just make sure he stays 
in position for a second until BC staff comes over to look at him. Brandon Sebastian has been involved in a lot of coverage here throughout this day on Chase Claypool. And again, it looks like his own player got him as Max Richardson was coming over. Richardson knee catches him right in the, the shoulder. shoulder. Yep. The right shoulder area. And you could see him up and walking off back to the BC sideline. Well, they're thin in the secondary as is. Mm -hmm. Sebastian probably there. Well, I, I'll tell you, Matry is a good little cover guy, but he's a true freshman, a redshirt freshman, and Sebastian only a sophomore. It, it just they're they're actually playing their tails off today to hang in there with these elite receivers in Notre Dame. Jason Matry, number three, one of the corners in the game here, gain a seven on uh, first down for Tony Jones. So second down, book down the middle for Komet. One step away from what would have been a touchdown. Well, this is what I've been waiting to see is is taking shots at the middle of the field. You're getting the outside receivers rolled up on on corners. It's covered too, Chris. Yeah, no, and you know the, the the corner goes out, so they double Claypool, and you're exactly right. They attack the middle of the field, but because the safety's over the top, they're scared of the new guy on Claypool, number 20 out here, Jones. And that's how you protect the new corner. You put the safety over the top to his side. Third and three, five in the pattern for Book. He's going to take Tremble and the tight end as the first down to the 27 yard line. So the Irish spreading it around in the passing attack. And the sophomore from Jones Creek, Georgia, moves the chains here with five minutes left in the third quarter. So Notre Dame trying to cash in a turnover. They have uh, done a lot of it, including four touchdowns against Navy, fifth in the FBS. Making those turnovers count. Pressure is picked up. Book looking for a place to escape. He will. The move at the 20. He'll lean forward, try to get to the 17 yard line. He's a yard shy, but Elijah Jones tackles a yard shy of that first down. That's a heck of a tackle and a lot of open space. And Ian Book is a shifty runner. It was a five man rush. He got flushed out of the pocket. There was a lot of open space. He's, and Ian saw all the extra space. He's looking to make a move. Great open field tackle. 12 carries for Book, 66 yards. A whole bunch of folks to the right for Notre Dame. A run up the middle of Jones will get the first down inside the 11 yard line. Notre Dame wearing down Boston College now here in this third quarter. A nice block by Eichenberg on, the le Eichenberg on the left side, but it is the wearing down part. You can feel that coming. The runs, a little more space in there. It, it just, this defense is, is played as well as they can. And now they're starting to bend. Over the top, commit, touchdown. So much attention to being paid to Claypool and the outside receivers, so the safeties get wide. A little play action, step up, and right down the middle of the commit. Sixth yeah. touchdown of the year. Claypool on the outside has a corner on him with the safety over the top. They do not want him to beat you. You end up one-on-one -on -one with a tight end off the play action fake, impossible to cover. So the gross sale turnover. Six plays and a minute 50 later turns into an 11 yard touchdown for Cole Komet. And the busy man of the day, Jonathan Dorr, makes it a 19 point Notre Dame lead with 344 left. Here in the third, and he ties the Notre Dame single season record, Ken McAfee, 42 years ago for receiving touchdowns, and none in his first couple of years has six here. And we saw Kyle Rudolph, the Minnesota Vikings tight end, terrific Notre Dame tight end in his day, on uh, his bye week taking in this game. And Paul Komet's looking like an NFL tight end down the line for sure. 26-7, you know, this Notre Dame senior class trying to leave with a victory. They were part of that 4-8 and eight disappointing season. 
back in 2016. And the turnaround is Brian Kelly at the reset button, bringing new coordinators in. They beat LSU in the Citrus Bowl, undefeated regular season that ended with the loss to national champion Clemson last year. Eight and two this year, Doug, if they win here, beat Stanford out in Palo Alto next week, and then win a bowl game. Be 33 wins in a three year span. It'll tie the most records in a three year stretch. The, the caveat there, the regular season's now 12 games. Teams play 13. It's a little bit longer, but that should not take away from the accomplishment at all of what this group has done in three years. Travis Levy going to take a knee this time after he took the hit the last time. That's probably wise. <laughs> You know, so Doug we had all the seniors introduced it's very interesting you get 30 kids introduced they're the ones who's academically who are academically in place to graduate at the end of this year these guys can come back if they so choose you know Ian Book wants to come back and add to what he has done this year and I, I tell you with all that he went through when they were struggling in the middle of the season and lost that game to Michigan. It just I, I love seeing him play with a smile on his face now and he's got to be excited about coming back next year. First down for the Eagles A.J. Dillon who has been quiet here today shy of the 30 yard line he carried 40 times in the last game. That's his 11th carry here today Clark Lee and the defense uh, they've had a lot of different headings to deal with over the last few weeks and uh, so far they've kept B.C.'s run game in check through three quarters. Dylan to the right and we get the first down to the 36 yard line he told us uh, yesterday Doug heavyweight boxing match for four quarters you try to tackle that guy that's what was ahead for his defense today you want to come up and strike a guy 240 250 pounds coming at you full speed the, the challenges you were talking about and facing an option team and then turning around and playing a power team he's, he's been very creative in how he's done it and consistent 37 gross sell throw it's a terrific catch if he held on to it nope did not Hunter Long went down low to get it couldn't scoop it up it'll bring up second down well there's a naked bootleg that Chris Sims was talking about during the break back and forth a little bit find something that's going to work they had a, a goal line naked bootleg where it was a walk in touchdown I had two guys wide open this is a drop ball all the way should have held on but fight it's very it's been very difficult for Boston College to find an easy first down an easy play there they found one and let it slip through their hands. Second and ten, Grossell looking for the crosser. Coming White is hit hard by Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. And Chris Koromoa, Owusu Koromoa, Drew White, and Bilal. The linebackers have really been difference makers this year. And they really have, guys. Uh, and, and even today, I think the speed of Notre Dame's defense, we've talked about their lack of defensive tackles, but it's the speed that has been really hard for Boston College's offensive line to deal with. And especially those three you mentioned, Bilal, White, Owusu Koromoa, they're, they're ball hawks. That's the position that the defensive coordinator coaches. Third down strike is incomplete. Threw it low for Ethan Williams, an emerging freshman on this BC offense. But Tariq Bracey was right around him. Couldn't scoop it up. And after a couple of first downs, the Eagles are going to have to kick it away again. Bracey with, with good coverage, but Williams has a shot at this ball. You've got a young quarter, a guy that a quarterback is inexperienced, is fighting his tail off. You got a chance to make a play. That's two drop balls in that drive. Guys got to make a play for their quarterback, even if it's tough. Grant Carlson will kick it to Chris Fink. Better kick this time, 46 yards, sent Fink back to the 18, trying to pick up some blocks. Fink got out of a tackle, gets to the 30, still going, and brought down shy of the 40. He came close to breaking one earlier this season. He'd love to take one all the way back, but a nice return of 21 there. Above the rest is brought to you by Jersey Mike Sub. That's Chase Claypool, Doug. Getting it on the under route. Chase Claypool took a little while to get going. He actually dropped a touchdown pass early, but when he's one on one, it's all over. And he's catching the ball in his hands. Even this slant route was a little high. He reaches up to grab it, but he blocks too. Chris, great hands, physical blocks. I mean, that's the thing you love about Chase Claypool. How many times have we seen him make tackles on special teams over the last few years? That's what NFL teams are going to love about him, is he can do anything. Go deep outside, work over the middle, break tackles. That's uh, that's his game. On first down, a little reverse action times two. Lindsey might go. Lindsey down the sideline. And in. What speed. Braden 
Lindsay breaks this one open. Once the ball was put in his hands, I wanted to yell track meet. <laughs> and it basically, Sebastian did a heck of a job trying to run down the track start. You're right, Doug, because at the 25, I was thinking, you can't catch him. But Sebastian was getting close. Braden Lindsay, as you know if you watched earlier games this year, has terrific speed in large part to his prodigious high school career as a track athlete just south of Portland, Oregon. I think the guys are going to give him a hard time about Sebastian closing on him. <laughs> we didn't catch him. And one of the players from the other side had the angle as well. Door adds the extra point. And the Irish have exploded for 17 points here in this third quarter. Lindsay, home run balls. Two of those are runs. One touchdown last week. Here's the 61 yard run today. It wasn't clean, but there was a little window. As he comes around, he's hitting his full speed. So he's got a stride working. And he just hits that gap off the heel, step out of it, and go. Now watch Sebastian close, which shocked both of us because we know what kind of speed Lindsay has. Lindsay is special, and he brings another dy you know, dynamic part of this offense to where you give him the ball on the edge, yes. forget about it. And uh, I got to say something about Sebastian, too. He has been very impressive today, mm -hmm. one of the stars of this defense. But Lindsay uh, is, just brings another game-breaking aspect to this offense. It's backpedal Sims, hey, by like the way. Yeah, <laughs> you think I wore my LeBrons today. <laughs> 61 yards on the score, and Brian Kelly has uh, seen Lindsey really inject himself into this offense. It's rare that you get three 50-plus yard touchdowns in a season, and two of them running for a wide receiver. Lindsey's done that here. This was a nine-point game not too long ago. Notre Dame has taken total control, and it, it just wore down that that Boston College defense. Travis Levy, who has a 45 yard kick return this year. He's been tagged a couple of times. Paul Mawala got him there, shy of the 25 yard line. Special teams coaches talk about when you're meeting a block on a kickoff or a return game, explode into contact and explode through it. Explode on contact with your tackle. I mean, this is the second time we've seen full speed collisions off of a kick return. Brian Polian, his second stint back here, has done a terrific job on special teams. They've also done a very good job of these running backs, averaging over 220 yards combined. Today, Dylan and Bailey held to 67 yards with a minute 38 left in the third. And Dylan on the sideline for now, and Bailey in the game. Rossell, it's off the hands. An incomplete trying to get to Zay Flowers as he does so much of his work crossing and underneath. Got to throw that ball with a little bit of touch there. He threw him a fastball from, from close range. But Flowers early in the year made a bunch of big plays for Boston College and kind of hit that freshman wall. He's had some drops and, and just hasn't had that explosive play in the last few weeks. Second and ten, Grossell will come back the other way for the tight end screen with Hunter Long, who's the back as a decoy and get out to about the 27 yard line. Jacob Lacey the tackle. So Boston College had that terrific drive in the first half of 75, of 85, four yards, I should say. But in the second half, Steve Adazio's team unable to sustain. I mean, you got to give credit to the defensive front seven for Notre Dame for shutting down this run game because it is an explosive run game and a powerful grinding run game. And it's it's non existent today for Boston College. Third and seven, the Irish bring four. Grossell's going to run for it, and he'll get the first down. Jameer Jones, who had dropped in coverage, was with a linebacker. Couldn't peel off to get the quarterback in time. The chains will move in the last minute of the third. But once he got to the outside, he wasn't going to get the first down, Grossell. He gets out of the pocket to the left. And he's probably going to get about a five yard run, but he lifts that ball up and looks downfield, backs the defenders off, and then he got an extra five yards for the first down. It's a little subtle nuance. 39, Grossell dropping back, 35, I should say. He's brought down for the sack by Colin Kareem. Injured in the first half, he's forced to fumble and gets the sack. 
here in this second half and Kareem is uh, may have re injured that shoulder area that was bothering him in the first half. Bloodied on his knee there as well. Khalid Kareem has uh, been a big part of the battle in this one. Almost got the ball that time on Grozel again. That's you know, and that is such a skill to. You're going full speed. You're trying to beat a block. You're getting low and trying to turn a corner on a big offensive lineman who's pretty darn good. And you have the savvy to reach for the ball to try to strip it. I mean, he's a heck of a player. He's been banged up at senior day. He wants to stay on the field. As the fourth sack for Notre Dame, 28th on the season. This is a BC team because they are so proficient at running, Doug, that has uh, given up very, very few sacks, second in the country. And we talked all week about how impressive the offensive line looked on film and how they've pushed people around. And they do have some big time players that will wind up being NFL guys in the O line. But without the running game today, the ability of Notre Dame to shut down the run. Boston College has to throw the ball a lot more than they want to and the pressure and the sacks just come usually they can pick their spot when they want to mm -hmm. throw the ball and that way they protect the quarterback much better. Different story here with Notre Dame on this run. All 17 points of this third quarter. Grossell will take off again and he'll get three yards and that will bring us to the end of three. The Irish have scored 27 in a row and they lead 33 7. Back after these messages from your local station, you're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Presented by Bright House Financial. Bright House Financial, all 17 in the third. For the Irish, leading 33 7. Soak up that sight here on this. Saturday before Thanksgiving final regular season home game for the Irish as our fourth quarter begins BC facing third and ten Grossell throwing in the middle and not even close the coverage was very good it'll bring up fourth down down to the field and Catherine yeah you guys are talking about Khalid Kareem trying to battle through that he's got a left shoulder strain and we saw Brian Kelly talk to him when he came off the field <laughs> and said why don't you just take off a play he, you can tell that he's really trying to hang in this game you guys were talking about it being senior night a very important game for him uh, but he's battling through that left shoulder strain Mike that's great shot great stuff down there tap uh, Kareem as we mentioned Doug he lost some of his running mates here during the year but he has been a difference maker these last three games for the Irish on defense. He has been a workhorse all year gets to the quarterback from the beginning of the year on I mean he's been he's the guy who gets in the backfield more than anyone. Fink stumbles stays on his feet and he's brought down right around the 27 yard line and that's where Notre Dame will take over. We talk about the emotion of senior day for these players here and you've seen uh, a lot of seniors who we documented it before we're through the four and eight season Doug and uh, you, you have been around here for now eight years now nine years of covering Notre Dame football the turnaround for this program really started when Brian Kelly made the coordinator change stop play calling and it's kind of built more of a relationship with a lot of these he players. really did he was more hands on he was seen by the players a lot more often open door policy talk to them anytime you want and it really made a difference opened up to him they got a feel for Brian he got a he got a feel for the players and it, it, it just the whole thing turned around in a hurry. First down, we're at Sebo Flemister for a couple of yards. You know, it, it, that's even not, Brian got in the weight room a little bit more and worked out, <laughs> and trimmed up. And it, was, it was a full commitment. Well, and that's not easy, too. Uh, he was a very successful coach one way, and giving up the play calling is, is an interesting and difficult thing. But to a man, every time the players come in, we visit with four or five during the weeks that we come out here. So you end up talking to you know, 20, 25 kids during the season. They all said, the difference in their coach is really a big part of the foundation that's been built here. Flemister run into the boundary to the 32 yard line there. And you know that group has to take a lot of pride in that turnaround from a four win season to an undefeated regular season. And then this year the potential to have 10 11 wins. You know the p potential to have that 33 wins in three seasons. Third and five. Pressure off the edge picked up that pass was deflected. Book had hit two thirds of his passes and 
And this is one of the rare drives in the second half that the Irish go three and out. And you've got to look at Chris Fink there just before the snap of the ball, and he epitomizes this turnaround more than anyone mm -hmm. and his whole journey from walk on to captain and just an instrumental part of the team that had his biggest games the last couple of weeks just really has turned it. But he got banged up a little in the middle of the season and really turned it on the end of this season. Freshman from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Jay Bramlett. Kick this one away. Doesn't get a terrific bounce. It'll die at the 35 yard line. 33 on the kick. BC will take over. Down 26. Ram trucks built to serve. By Discover It Miles Car. Learn more at discover.com slash travel. And by State Farm, talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Those awesome faces right there, except for me, Doug Cat, yeah, we're not awesome. awesome. Everybody else, that is our awesome crew who works on Notre Dame football all season. We also have some students who work on this project as well, including Corzo there, Dave Korsnowski, who has uh, been a part of our Notre Dame coverage over the last four years. He's a senior, so he enjoyed senior day not working with us, but in with the students. Good for him. I hope he enjoyed it, and we always enjoy coming here. Ball was on the ground, and Tyler Vrabel able to get on it, but they say the runner was down, so it's only a gain of three and no fumble. More importantly, out of that group are my Friday, Friday and Saturday morning receivers to throw the ball around with on the football field. Yes, Doug we is, have a good time together. Doug is a full-fledged kid. He needs to throw the football often. Meetings are not his. Here's a pass in trouble for Kobe White, trying to escape, fenced in by Irish defenders, and Sean Crawford closes down on him to make the play. When you talk about players and senior day with all the guys going through senior day. A couple ACLs, an Achilles injury, dislocated elbow this year was like no big deal for Sean Crawford. He missed a few but worked his way back. A uh, wonderful young man. He did treat it like no big deal because of what he's been through. Got right. We didn't believe he'd be coming back. No. And it was only a couple of weeks and he's right back in there playing at a high level. Third and 16 and Grossell throws in the middle. It's intercepted for the fourth time this year. Carl Hamilton took one all the way in the opener. This one he's brought down inside the 15 by the quarterback Grossell. A four interception freshman season for Kyle Hamilton. So he's rotating to a single high safety. So Hamilton comes from the other side, drops into the middle, a middle defender, eyes the quarterback, reads his eyes, and breaks on the ball. He has a nose for the football. The first day in camp this year is a true freshman. Three interceptions on that day. His first play on this field, interception return for a touchdown. We got to visit with the freshman from outside of uh, Atlanta at the Maris School yesterday. And uh, he's got a great poise in large part because of his dad who played a dozen seasons of basketball over in Europe a little bit in the NBA and his dad has trained NBA players. He's been around pros. And he knows how to act like one as a freshman. He's fabulous book blitzed got rid of it turns and tosses complete and it's Lawrence Keys the third takes it inside the 10 over at the seven yard line. So Max Richardson is the best defender on this Boston College team by far. We've said that mm -hmm. going in and he just comes at Ian Book unblocked coming off the edge little fish hook move step and spin around get around totally relaxed feels it knows it and then makes a play. Book has thrown two touchdown passes his next one times Ron Paulus on the all time Notre Dame list book throws dropped by keys. Second time a would be touchdown has been dropped by an Irish receiver today. I was going to say the same thing. The one dropped earlier by Claypool. He likes these under routes. He sees some zone coverage down here. It's cleared out a little bit. He's going out the back door, going to walk in the end zone. Oh. He kind of had both hands in opposite instead of pinkies together, together. thumbs yep. together. He had a pinky with a thumb. One of each. <laughs> that would increase. Career touchdown number one for Keys. Book reloads, escapes, flips, touchdown on senior day for Chris Fink. Okay, we've talked about buying time. 
in moving her, but it's the ease in which he's doing it now. He's so relaxed. Usually the ball's out in two and a half seconds. He just hangs on and moves around until someone's open, almost six seconds. Makes it look easy. Chris Fink on senior day getting a touchdown. We're going to let the other guy go in. What do you think, Ian? Okay, you want to see that? No, I really, I got to get more touchdowns. He's thrown three. <laughs> Extra point added by Jonathan Doerr. And their name's blowing the doors off of this one. Chris Fink with the catch on his cell phone. He's kept a list of those who have doubted him. Ian Book had those who doubted him during this season. Those two hook up as the Irish run continues. 40 to 7, Notre Dame. Saturday, November 30, shop small and support the small businesses in your community. Remember, this is a team effort, so let's all get up, get out, and shop small. Nothing small about the accomplishments of Ian Book. Now tied, as mentioned, with Ron Paulus there on the right, fourth on the all-time Notre Dame list. Career touchdown passes. Ron, for those who don't know, is the associate athletic director for football here at Notre Dame now. The quarterback from the mid-90s does a lot with this program and is always a pleasure to be around. Travis Levy the return from the eight. He'll be just past the 25 yard line and we'll check in with Liam for another game break. All right Mike Georgia dealt the Irish one of their two losses. They're ranked fourth pushing for the college football playoff today hosting Texas A&M. Jake Brown just four of 13 passing but he connects there with George Pickens. Bulldogs up 10 this one early in the third. Interesting game in the rain there and obviously Georgia on its way to the SEC championship game representing the East but uh, their bigger concern to stay in that position there for the college football playoff. So is their hope. As all of that conversation meanders through the next couple of weeks of what ifs. Here is Dylan to the right interesting he's still in there to the 33 yard line BC has to win against Pittsburgh. If they'd like to go to a bowl game, the Eagles are going to be five and six with this setback. Steve Adazio will not get to seven wins this year. That's been his high watermark. Five times he's had a seven win season at BC. Their athletic director is one of the uh, most well thought of folks in athletic hierarchy Martin Germond there he is before the game on the right hand side he turned 40 today he's the youngest athletic director in any of the power five schools and uh, he has said these uh, couple of games are very important for the Eagles going forward as Loey Gilman's back in the game and makes the tackle on David Bailey Steve Adazio he's done some good things Doug as you well know it's very difficult to build a program in the Northeast right now because you don't have that natural resource of recruiting in your backyard. He has built hard tough hard nosed football teams that are as physical as anyone in the country. They battle it out but the skill position is where they fall short of the power five teams and, and being able to be explosive the big play guys on the outside the defensive backs you know that type of position is, is tough so you need to be a powerful running football team he's established that but it just can't get over that hump but for some context when we're talking to Brian Kelly about growing up not too far from BC hey you know a BC fan growing up and he said you know what college football wasn't that big a deal in Boston until you came along with your group uh, in the 80s at Boston College led by Jack Bicknell your head coach and uh, all the terrific players who were around your era and then BC has sustained over time some good runs as this pass underneath is caught for a minimal game think of the Tom Coughlin era Matt Ryan was there uh, there have been good performances but uh, even for a kid you Chris in the Northeast as you well know this guy grew up in Jersey and college football building in that part of the country is very difficult. That's exactly right. It's just not as important. There's the Jets, the Giants, the Patriots. They dominate. You know, I, I was there and I was like, I don't want to go to any of these schools. Well, let's go to Texas. Let's go to Tennessee. And I think that's what happens a lot in the Northeast and the Boston and New York area. It's just not a big enough deal to where they want to go to Notre Dame and Clemson and Alabama because it's a uh, 90,000 every game. Fourth and two here. BC going to go for it down 33 and Grossell's pass is deflected and incomplete. Sean Crawford cutting under that to knock it away. BC's going to try to get bowl eligible of the win against Pitt next Saturday. Not going to get it on this Saturday in South Bend. Some of the future stars Notre Dame players have come through that path to South Bend in the past including Hamilton who had a pick. Cometo has a touchdown and Filcher Kovic 
who is now in the game to close this one out for the Irish. And we have a whistle here before first down and some movement. There's Ian Book's final numbers. Full start, number 62. First and 26 of 40 higher completion percentage and add the three so Dougie's throw for 12 touchdowns here in the last three games and it's looked effortless it's really been smooth and he's relaxed throwing the ball well seeing things so Logan plants in there who picked up the flag he is a senior playing on senior day his last year of eligibility another flag here and that one on Dylan Gibbons the junior from Clearwater Florida all right guys you're getting your chance here we're going to pull you out in a second one more three and you're out backup offensive lineman in could just say I'm going to fault start so they uh, mentioned me in my final game there you go the 46 to keeper for Jerkovic will break a tackle and Jerkovic Gets those false start yards back to the 40 yard line. Max Richardson tackles him after a gain of 14. You know, he's got size to him and he stands in but big arm, all that, but he can run the football. We've seen it every time he steps on the field that he can take off and run. And there, Richardson's pulling him down, and you know he saw nothing in front of him if he could have stepped out of that tackle. On the reserves in now for the Irish. Dracovic read that one and kept it. John Lamont took the worst of that hit as he had the collision with the Jamir Smith. And the BC athletic training staff's back out to look at Lamont, who was injured in the first half as well. Just a direct shot with Smith there. I'll just take a minute to make sure they can assess him before he gets up too quick. We'll step out. Uh, walk off and into the tent where he will get uh, looked at. Look at this hit with Jameer Smith. Flakes flying off the gold helmet, and mm -hmm. you know those collisions just happen. It's incidental, and he, his legs just buckle and go oh. out from under. He's he's down. Just uh, they got him up quickly too, uh, but uh, he was able to walk off with assistance. But certainly will be further examined by the BC athletic training staff. So the clock restarts. Approaching eight minutes left here in this fourth quarter, and Jerkovic's throw is complete. Look down at George Tackett's with the grab to the 30 yard line. He had a touchdown earlier this year. The junior who's backing up Cole Komet and Tommy Tremble and Brock Wright as well. The future tight end is in good hands at Notre Dame, and I'm sure more will come in. Smith with the handoff and he'll be stopped so the Irish go to Stanford next week Stanford currently playing Cal in the big game in Palo Alto and then Notre Dame will wait to find out what their bowl status will be you could have a Notre Dame team that's ranked up in the top 12 13 depending on what happens over the next couple of weeks that is 10 and 2 on the season with losses to two teams that are in the top 10 in Georgia and Michigan. Yet the Irish wouldn't play in a New Year's Day bowl game because of contracts and uh, the 8,000 different permutations that come with the college football playoff. It'll be a tough set of circumstances for the Irish to end up in a New Year's Six game. Jerkovic inside the five and down at the three. Elijah Jones saved the touchdown. Just a great job with vision on 96. That's Burke that he's reading and a good decision on the, the defensive end closing down. 96 Burke goes there, got the block on the outside and north and south. Jerkovic loves running the football. He's going to run it tough and finish the run at the end. From the three, Smith will be stopped here. No, got one more yard to the two. If Arian Shinover, who is a senior wide receiver, playing his last game. He's number 27. He's up at the top of the screen. You got a couple of guys, like Shinover, and we mentioned earlier Logan Plant, who are on the field, who rarely get a chance That's to play. He's smiling. Over throw there. the ball to me. <laughs> throw the right. ball. <laughs> Please, it's my one chance to get a touchdown here. Get near the ball. Jerkovic keeps it, and he is stopped short. He'll be pulled down at the three. So third and goal coming up. 
with six minutes left and uh, some of the seniors who wouldn't normally be in in backup roles because it's senior day it's a 33 point game their last game at the stadium and they're getting a chance to close this one out. So you're a senior wide receiver you're getting your one opportunity to be on the field and they call a run play. <laughs> am I blocking my guy or am I eyeing for a fumble to fall on near the end zone. I think you got to do your job right. Do Absolutely your job. you do you do he's been out here most of this uh, <laughs> most of this drive and let the play clock run all the way down here. And then Dracovic will get after it third and goal. The mesh between Smith and Dracovic was not perfect there he'll be down at the three. You know I never played in the zone read time and, and I mm -hmm. defenders and had that ball in the belly of a fullback and pulling the ball out all that stuff that it's amazing to me the ball doesn't end up on the ground more. We had that discussion with the coaching staff at Navy last week how it's uh, not over taught they just uh, do a feel a repetition over and over and over. Figure it out the two of you. <laughs> they look down there. All those guys are so interested in what the play call is to see <laughs> who's going to get the opportunity. Yeah. About well, fourth and goal. And the Irish trying to bleed the play clock as well to uh, hasten the end of this one. Fourth and goal. Dracovic's going to keep it and he'll be brought down. TJ Ram, the junior, makes the stop. And BC will take over on downs with 4.33 to go. Doug. Seven points all BC could muster against the Irish defense. What a job by this Notre Dame defense today. Big day for him stopping the run. Look at the downhill motion by all the linebacker levels stepping forward. The speed that they're hitting the gaps. Defensive end speed. Hitting and penetrating getting in the backfield so that these two big backs could not get going at all north and south because this whole offense for Boston College is dependent on the run game first. So it was a commitment to stopping the run downhill reaction first. Go ahead step forward take your chance if it's play action we'll deal with it but you're going to stop that run first. Travis Levy is now the running back Paul Mualo tackles him the backup quarterback is in for Boston College Matt Vilecci. Richard freshman from Marinette New York he played the last series against NC State came in at the uh, garbage time of the 59 to 7 game against Clemson and the young man from uh, just north of New York City in Marinette in to close this out. He's a tall pro style quarterback with a big arm that stands in the pocket for his size he's he's decently athletic for his size can move. Just um, Justin Adam Lola joining. The Notre Dame hit parade on defense. Bo Bauer in there as well. 52, Bo Bauer in the middle, stepping up through. Nobody comes off for him. He makes the cut to the outside to get away from Bauer. Loss on the play. Adam Elola. Adam Elola. Yeah, Justin, whose brother Jason, out of the lineup with the ankle injury, makes the play. Third and 11. Tough spot to throw your fifth collegiate pass, and it was incomplete. Chris intended for Elijah Robinson. Yeah, I was so athletic up front. I mean, have we seen a game this year where there's a better front seven as far as athletes are concerned? Notre Dame. You know, you do Oaken Oaken Deji, Jameer Jones, of course, a Wusu Koromoa. What they did today was just create a chaos for this Boston College offensive line, to where I don't think they could sort out who they were supposed to block. You know, people just don't realize how athletic this Notre Dame team is. I don't think they get the credit for it. They actually don't have the big hogs that yeah. we're used to seeing them have. They do have the great athletes. You're, you're right, Chris. They've been difference makers up front. Good kick by Carlson here. Lawrence Keyes goes back to get this punt return. And a flag comes down as he ends up on the BC side of midfield. The flag will probably bring it back. So I give one shout out to Timotope Algoro, who was a walk on senior who is playing his last game here in the stadium. And he made the Derek play on defense of that last Billy pass. In the back, number 38, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. So the Irish coming off the victories by 31 over Duke and 32 over Navy lead here by one more. So progressively getting better. And it's been some 30 years. So only appropriate they're wearing these uh, throwback uniforms. Uh, honoring college football's 150th anniversary and honoring the 1988 national championship team a little bit of the look involved here. McAsaf continues to go down the depth chart and bring in the players playing for the final time here we're a little bit deeper 
on the Notre Dame roster. Another false start. Right snap, false start. Number 62, offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And Logan plants again. All right, gang, here's our plan for next year. Great Notre Dame home schedule. It'll start with the Arkansas. We'll certainly have a new head coach. The Wisconsin game is in Lambeau. We'll go back to that in a second as Asaph runs to the edge and a nice run by Mick Asaph, his eighth carry of the se season. Wisconsin at Lambeau. We get to go see Notre Dame, Wisconsin at Lambeau, which would be great. Stanford comes here, Duke, and then November 7th, Clemson against Notre Dame here at Notre Dame Stadium. So a terrific season. Make your plans accordingly. Chris, uh, you know, continue the success and the health of Trevor Lawrence. It'll be wonderful to see him come play in here and what will likely be his final season in college football. Right. I mean, that's got my attention. I mean, we're talking about a guy that's, you know, potentially the number one pick in the draft two years from now. So that is going to be one that I know Doug and I are going to be over analyzing the quarterback. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. I'll tell you what, Trevor Lawrence in the playoff runs the mm -hmm. last couple of years. He makes decisions. He sees coverage. He anticipates throws, and he's got unbelievable athleticism. But his throw—he was making major league NFL throws two years ago. Jerkovic's going to come out, so Nolan Henry can come finish the game off for the Irish graduate student from Vancouver, Washington. And that brings applause from uh, the students, from the fans. Nolan was a holder at one point during his uh, Notre Dame days here, and. Uh, he has uh, become the guy who's signaling in the plays to the quarterbacks. And he gets a chance to close it out. He'll take a run over here, get knocked down at the 46 yard line, a gain of one. I got a chance to pull it. I'm pulling it. I'm in the game, darn it. Look at him. I love this part of the game where the upperclassmen or where the teammates get to see the seniors that don't get an opportunity to get in games, get in games and make a play. And they just cheer for him, even if it's a short gain or. Procedure call whatever it is they love to get their buddies they work just as hard as they do. It's a one yard run. Here's your right <laughs> yeah. back. Claypool book. Hey, you're in the uh, the books forever as uh, a run at Notre Dame Stadium on your senior day as well. Fair catch here at the 20 yard line made by Andrew Strader. Minute one left. Chris Sims, uh, when we uh, as we kind of spin this towards the end of the season, just your perspective on uh, the home season you see for the Irish, where again they will go undefeated at Notre Dame Stadium. Well, just as a, I'm so impressed by Notre Dame, the whole organization, not only the quality of the kids, but the way Brian Kelly runs things. Chip Long, Clark Lee. I mean, come on. We sit here and overanalyze them every play, and they usually come up with the right answers. Uh, and just everything is on the up and up here at Notre Dame, and I hope the fans don't get too unrealistic with their expectations because this is a second year in a row we've seen a very dominant Notre Dame football team. Along those lines, Chris, when they lost the game to Michigan, when Notre Dame lost to Michigan, yeah. we were coming in for the next game, and local fans are like, when are we going to be good again? Right. Last year, undefeated. Went to the college football playoff, and this year an opportunity to maybe win 11 games. Yes. I mean, that's that's elite. Right. Because Stanford is struggling this year. They have had a lot of injuries, but the Irish have not won out on the farm since 2007. They'll try to change that at Stanford coming up next Saturday. And Jack Swarbrick, the athletic director at Notre Dame, has uh, seen this football program put together one of the best runs at home in Notre Dame Sterling football history. The Irish, the third longest home win streak now, 18 consecutive home victories. Back to back, Notre Dame undefeated seasons here in South Bend. They dominate BC to win 40 to 7 on senior day as we go down to the field in Catherine. Coach, protect this house and win in November. Two very strong points of emphasis that you tell your team. How proud are you of them that they've been able to accomplish that? I'm uh, very proud to go undefeated at home two years in a row and you know, with the senior class going out winners again, uh, I think that uh, says everything about what they've been uh, to this program. And again, uh, 
it just, you know, any time that you play this game, you have to commit so much to it. And for them to turn things around for us in these last three years, um, it just means so much to me and our staff uh, and all of our fans to be undefeated now for a second consecutive year at home. One more game to go at Stanford. What do you want to see your team accomplish next week? Well, just stay, you know, a, a standard has been set in terms of the way they play this game, and, and they understand that. And come back against Stanford, uh, play to that standard. And, um, again, winning 10 for three years in a row is um, – quite a standard that uh, this will be their 30th win now over the last three years and that's uh, that's that's pretty rare air. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, appreciate Catherine. it. Appreciate it. Mike? All right, Catherine. Great season. Thank you. Great work with UTAP. 91 through 93. The last time Notre Dame has had three consecutive double-digit win seasons. They'll have two chances to do it. The first one comes next Saturday, but for the last time for the seniors in the band and the students and the players, they gather for the alma mater, Notre Dame, our mother.